the, the, the Mets, Mets had them first. The combination of the Dodger Blue and the New York Giant. That that I don't know. The guys all age, Bob. We're not allowed to do stuff like that. <laughs> Well, I'm sure uh, it, it was. Uh, I, I want to remember is that that's the first time I have it. Well, sorry, uh, 12 results right? so, or, or 11. All right, it's time to start. Everybody sit down. Good evening, and welcome to the Board of Trustees work session uh, for January 9th, 2023, the first one of the year. Uh, I need a motion to open meeting. So moved. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the first item we're going to take is uh, Mr. Neil Desai is going to update us on the progress that we hope has been made. Uh, on the comprehensive plan. Hello, Neil. In person. For the record, the same. Good to see you, Neil, in the flesh. Oh, that was the best. For the record. This is my colleague, Chris DeMello, uh, who joined us recently by our community planning group at Harvesting Hanover. Uh, we, we did a lot of background work on the presentation that I'm going to be showing on the screen. Is that is that something somebody can put up on the screen presentation? That uh, it's part of the background. We have it. One pull up. Yeah, it's, it's attached to the agenda, so we should be able to just uh, get it from uh, the website. And uh, so, in the meantime, I will yeah. decide. I'm principal planner at Hardestine Hanover. Uh, uh, yeah, I am ha very happy to be in person. Um, the, what I'm going to be uh, showing, uh, what I had said to the, the Board of Trustees for the work, prior work session that I, where I was speaking at over, over the video conference was, uh, we had just finished the, 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 the survey, closed it down, and I sent you essentially a few snapshots of the, of the charts of some of the key things about level of satisfaction, dissatisfaction, and then the prior what people thought priority topics which should be for the comprehensive plan update. And that was, uh, and then there was a, 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 a download, a, a data dump, if you will, of just uh, the, the data that we, that we, uh, that, that came in. There's a lot of comments also. So you did receive that. But this, this presentation is really what, you know, I owe to the public to, to provide something that's not just a data dump, but just a, a, a presentation that really summarizes for folks what, uh, what some of the findings were. Eight hundred or fifty so people take this uh, take the survey. So appreciate everybody taking the time to, to to take the survey and share their thoughts. Eight hundred fifty one. Uh, so I don't need to actually spend too much time on this because uh, uh, you know we we covered some ground at the last meeting with the data, but I just wanted to click through. And is there any way I could have a click through? Uh, do I have a click through? Is it, so I can ask you to. Should say next. Okay, next, please. <laughs> uh, and uh, next again. So, and I think we, we, we you know, we, the, the purpose of this, uh, just to do a brief recap, was uh, we had worked on a, we've been working in the conference and plan updates since 2017, 2018, and there was a lot of public engagement uh, that was done back then. Two public workshops, we were participated in several events where we talked with people, we interviewed people to get uh, intelligence on, on what we thought about the future of Amerinac. We had um, public, we already, we had produced actually two drafts and we had public review of two full drafts and which resulted in uh, a number of 2020 draft an update. And uh, we, I think we wanted to revisit uh, we ought to reconnect with the public. And so uh, we thought this is the best way to, we haven't done a survey uh, in, in, in the past after in the past in 2018, but we thought it would be a good way to reach out to the broadest number of people to touch base, to reconnect, to see what's you know, what's changed, to see if anything has, um, let's see in, uh, see in the presentation, uh, to see whether any priorities have shifted, um, if any existing issues have improved or worsened or any new issues have emerged. Uh, and so uh, 
if we would continue on to the next slide. Um, so the next few slides are just uh, introductory information really for the public, just to recap what we did. So you can continue to um, just the survey promotions. I wanna make sure people know how we promoted the survey. We'll stop right there. This is the, this is the, the just collating all the, how many people responded. It was 851 responses. 18 of the respondents took the survey in Spanish. So it was an English and a Spanish version of the survey. Uh, and all 792 of those were village residents. And so the next slide, if you can start advancing the slide, this is the next slide. We just summarize uh, some of the responses of, of, the, of the questions that, that give information about the respondents. Which of the following best describes you? And, and this just shows how many percent, 93% of the respondents were village residents. We also had uh, business owners that took the survey, some of who were both uh, residents and non-residents. And uh, we had other people who, who visit the village a lot. So there's a small number of people who are all part of the community in a way they're not, they don't live here, but they see things, uh, may see things in, in, in the same way or different ways as, as, other, as people who live in the village. So next slide. The, this is a little bit of uh, demographics on how long um, uh, respondents is in terms of, uh, uh, we asked them how long they've lived in the village and you can see the almost half the residents are respondents that were the long timers, they, they were eager to chime in. Uh, and you know something we would do if this were like starting at the very beginning of the conference plan update process, I think we would you know probably dig down into the responses even further and see if there are any differences between um, some of the demographics. For example, the people who live here longer indicate different priorities than people who live here you know less. So, but you know this is kind of focused on on you know updating the November 22 draft. So we kind of kept this to this this level of information. Wanted to just show show people who, who responded. Again, we have the age demographics of the people who responded. The, the largest percentage were, were folks in. The, the 40s, if I'm doing math correct, 44 to 44 and 53 years old. Mm -hmm. Continue on to the next slides. So this, this, uh, which neighborhood? We, we talked about this a little bit. The now the the list of neighborhoods came from this map from the comprehensive plan uh, in in 2010. That Marinex comprehensive uh, 2010 comprehensive plan. And uh, you know we found that you know there's some there may this may not be the way. The residents see their neighborhood, some do, some don't. Um, but I think if you look at the next slide, you see that a number of about 10% of people put other, and a lot of them were were not sure. Um, so it may not, people, some people may not identify as a neighborhood. But I think the important thing about this is just the geographic, just you know, every neighborhood has has different conditions or or, or often will have unique needs. And so uh, we wanted to get a sense of uh, you know who where where people from the village are. are where, where do they live? Where are they? Where are they coming from? When they're and and, and their responses are they, are they? You know what is it? Are they neighborhood specific? And so we wanted to look at that and also to see if you know to gauge if there was if there's if there was you know equitable distribution in terms of responses. And I think part of it depends on the population of, this, of the of each of the neighborhoods. So I think that's a kind of deeper level analysis one could do. Um, but I think um, if there are any, you know, I definitely if there's any other comments on this 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 slide, I should I certainly want to uh, uh, talk about that as well. And but let me uh, continue on to the the next uh, the next slide. So the next slides are about um, you know, we we started with some warm up questions. Why do you why did you move to the village? And we chose to only ask people who've been here recently and moved here within the last nine years or so. Uh, because we want to see if there's anything new, uh, anything new that might have drawn people for whatever reason. Then the answer may not be yes. The answer may be no. But the the word cloud essentially takes all of the comments that we received, the open-ended comments uh, that people had. Every every question usually had a place where we can put the open-ended comments, and uh, we kind of put that together. And the larger the word uh, is usually essentially the larger number of times people mentioned. Uh, that aspect and so wow. it's just kind of a nice visual to put in there but essentially schools the water proximity to new york city and the community and and you know that's that made that that's that's i mean that's similar to what i heard back in 2018 and i'm sure it, it may have been from from, from uh, longer back um next slide please so what i've done again this is this is showcasing some of the the, the sampling of the comments um that the people had uh, for that question, keep going. 
Uh, we did the same for what do you like most about the living? Oh, sorry, the living in the village. Uh, the, the harbor, walkability, small and compact physical character, and the sense and feel of community. And so this is an important question in terms of the comprehensive plan because uh, you know, this is these are identifying things um, that should be preserved or enhanced as we move forward. I think while the village may be walkable, uh, it may not necessarily be pedestrian friendly. So you know, those are things that that uh, you know you want to you, know, you want to think about as you as you plan for the future of, of the uh, of the uh, of, of the village. Next slide, please. Mayor, if I can. Yeah. Uh, Neil. Sure. When when um, when the respondents mentioned the harbor. Is it the water? Is it Harbor Island Park? Is there any? Can you dig into that a little bit, or all, all three? It's okay. it's the water, Harbor Island Park. People shortcut it as the harbor. Okay. People said Long Island Sound. Okay. So it's it's a uh, it's a, a mix of all things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and Oh, oh, you click. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, and, and and this is just a, uh, the fourth thing, which is the sense of community. I think this is this is very important. You know, people really have a the words people use, the, the hominess, the neighborhoodiness, the community feel. I think that's uh, you know those are strong sentiments that that uh, people brought, uh, that people included in their uh, in their, in their uh, Responses and that may you know that that's that's very special and that uh, that may or may not be different for other towns. Um, next slide, please. So these are the these are the the, the graphs that you that I've said you before and these are the this chart shows the distribution of the ratings of each topic uh, <clears throat> that uh, on, the, on the list that you see on the slide there. From, uh, and then it's organized from the highest level of dissatisfaction at the top to the uh, highest level of satisfaction at the bottom. And another way to look at this slide, this is just, I think this is useful just to see the range of, of input. Uh, it's useful to see what people had no opinion about, uh, just, just to see, you know, things like historic preservation probably were some people maybe were agnostic about or just didn't have anything to say about. Uh, but that's just a, a small number. But it's good to see the range and, and how they vary. Uh, I think you'll see you'll see kind of some have kind of both positive and negative. But it, but essentially, if you if you if you can go to the next slide, um, we came we this is the weighted average of each one. And so this is uh, in terms of the topics, um, which uh, you know which which topics do you feel here? Uh, you know what is the the weighted average of, of all the topics and flood protection, uh, I think, comes out first. And if you go down the list, uh, you can see the, the other uh, land use and development, and so on and so forth. And one thing that we're going to do that we do next, and I'm going to talk about, is just what, what do all these things mean? I think some people, uh, when they're taking the survey, also said land development could be the things we like about it, things we don't like about it. So we do um, we do go. We do go into the comments to start to get a sense of what exactly those terms mean when people are saying land development. Um, and so, uh, and also, if you can go to the next slide, I want to talk about these two slides together. This is the top three priorities. Um, people were asked to pick uh, three out of the, all the topics on the list and prioritize them. And um, uh, I'd say a lot of people have difficulty picking three. Uh, the next slide just summarizes some of the topics. I want to stay on this slide and the previous slide. Um, uh, I think uh, actually, can we go back to the previous slide? So I just want to stop at, uh, at the slide seventeen and slide eighteen, and just if there's any reactions or reactions to any of this, if, if this is kind of confirms what you already know, or if there are any surprises in what you've seen to these responses. I'm not surprised. I, I have a question on. Can we go to slide sixteen? Is there a way for us for us to combine like dissatisfied and very satisfied to see like a raw number? Because we know how many people completed the survey, but is there a way for you to tell us the total number of people who submitted the survey that were very dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with flood protection, for example? Or just so we can have an, I, I would think of, to me it's more helpful if I have a number opposed, well, as opposed to this to percentage. A percentage. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very easy. We could have a, a 
I could have a, a chart which shows the raw the numbers as opposed to the percentages. Yeah, I think both are helpful. I just I'm just curious to see what the number is because so many people did complete it. And it's, that's a large dissatisfaction rate of flood protection. We had a big flood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what. Some people are very satisfied. So I'm just curious to see what the numbers look like. How to break down. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you can't do that now. But, but no, no, no. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. No, I'm just, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, of course. It's not surprising. It's just things kind of. No, it's not surprising. Yeah, not. Kudos to the library. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because library is at least a great job. Um, We're winning library, right? Is yeah. I can't. I'm trying to go through a, another packet, but um, is the numbers broken down by um, respondents of uh, race and ethnicity? Uh, no, we didn't ask that. We didn't ask that question. The only question we asked was the optional question was uh, uh, the age question. Mm -hmm. I think we, I think you know we could have asked the question. Uh, that is something we, we could have asked. I, I think it'd be it is important because based upon like the top priorities yeah. that you know that can differ who you know what is because housing could be different from based upon ethnicity or even the income level of uh, individuals what is important to them um, it's just things are different based upon your race and ethnicity or your income level and everything else so yeah, I, you know, so we, we had 18 responses to, to this survey that were uh, Spanish speakers. And I think one thing I do have is, you know, we have their comments. And I think, you know, primarily those 18 people who took the thing, affordable housing was was in the top priority in, in terms of this, the 18 Spanish speakers, a small number, but it could be, you know, could be meaningful in terms of that is a very, based that response. That is a very small number considering that, um, I think it said 23% of our those residents comprise of Hispanic speaking uh, residents. So um, that doesn't show us a good, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. I think, you know, we had this, you know, we had a, the survey for November 15th through December. Uh, I'm sorry, November 15th through December. I think it was three, a three week time. Yeah, period. And, and I think, so uh, there's a couple of things. I think, I think, um, um, I think, I think when, when I was working with the public information officer on the promotions of this, uh, we were trying to, you know, figure out, well, the neighborhood question was something I kind of, uh, I was the only one I could go with in terms of uh, looking at the data so far to see what the distribution of the neighborhoods were. Um, I think if we had, you know, another few weeks, I think we would we could have done maybe some more uh, dedicated outreach to make sure that uh, whether it's neighborhood specific, Race specific, language specific, there could be more. We could build it, bring in more responses. Um, I, I guess then the question would be um, in, in terms of you know your knowledge of the village, in terms of how the priorities and satisfaction levels. Uh, I guess that data would give you something more specific, like like I said, with age. If we dug in a little more, we could tell you the younger people have certain more preferences. We could do the same thing with with race or income levels and what their what their things are. So. But I think as far as the, the results we have right now, um, they saw they, they sound like they don't they're not surprising to you. Um, but do you think that are they are they representative with what you've been hearing? Um in, yeah. in general speaking. Yeah. Yes. 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 protection yes. is definitely well, the <laughs> yeah. but it sure. yes. um I wasn't shocked by anything. I mean, and the value of a survey like this, uh, I think it's to uh, to let us know if there's something that we're not seeing just by looking at the situation. So um, I don't see, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm my impressions are, uh, are um, seem to be a, seem to be accurate given the uh, given the, the results we're getting. Uh, I, I guess the only thing that, um, if I had to say anything that <clears throat> I found uh, a little interesting is uh, the amount of people who. Uh, Talked about affordable housing, and I'm, you know, and that I think is getting this, the situation is getting worse and worse as time goes on. Right, and so, so I'm gonna let me continue on because yeah. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna address that. So you can go to the the, the, the next slide, um, and then the, uh, slide 18, and then slide, 
slide 19. So I think one thing is that people in, in, the, in the, we got about 900 comments. Uh, so there's a lot of comments. I think I, I sent the, the Board of Trustees all the raw comments. I would love to append that to the this presentation for anybody who'd like to see it. And I know there's interest in the committees uh, uh, to just kind of be able to look at that that data. It's not sorted by topic, but it's it's a rich body of information. Most people behave fine. So I, don't, I think maybe there are one or a few outliers, <laughs> but most people behave very well and give their comments and are very thoughtful. So, uh, but I think there's a rich body of information there. And, um, but as far as, and, and I know people on people, uh, people link together topics. Like it was, it was easy for us to come up with these topics, flood protection, land use and development. Uh, but the way people respond, especially in the comments, they show links among all of those. So they understand. And so I think if you go to the next, uh, the next slide, um, you know, these are kind of a, a, a examples of how they start connecting flood protection and land use. Um, I think, uh, I, in terms of the, the streets, sidewalks, and, and safety. And I think the, the most important thing for the comprehensive plan update is if you can go to the next um, the next slide. I think that's really the key. Uh, yeah, the next slide after that, slide 22. So this is the this is really the key thing is like, you know, how are the results of this in, uh, inform the comprehensive plan? And so I started doing some thinking on this late last night, so I wasn't able to continue, but I did some more thinking about it. I think Without a doubt, um, um, if when I compare the 2018 comprehensive plan update, or actually the 2020 draft, excuse me, pre-IDA, and this one obviously the most the, the most obvious change is, is when the flooding is now a major concern on everybody's minds, and uh, and, a, and a high top of a priority, and that's not a surprise. Um, I think, and what that tells me is, that, if you go to the next slide, Arby, please. Um, I just trying to put down some thoughts about, I think what that means is there's a chapter that, that's uh, in chapter eight, sorry, chapter nine. In the, do you want water? Uh, we we got one. Oh, does it? Yeah, we got one. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so chapter, that chapter talks about uh, open space resilience. And that really is a place where um, I think the people, you know, I think a lot of the comments in the, in the, in the survey. Had had said you know you have to address this this topic comprehensively and and I think the comprehensive plan is certainly uh, the, a good place to start to do that and come up with a comprehensive approach to flood protection um, and so I've been talking with the flood mitigation committee and, and seeing what you know what kind of policies and <clears throat> plans they have in mind and and so that that'll be part of the comprehensive plan uh, in terms of how this informs uh, informs the comprehensive plan update the second way is. Um, um, the the 2020 draft um, has a five year time horizon, which isn't very typical. It's usually a longer time horizon, and I think I want to expand it to 10 year planning horizon. I think that makes sense. There's so many topics here, and I think five years is is a is a very is too compact of a time. Horizon. I think for the sustainability section, that was good because that was the focus initially was sustainability section, so it was kind of a five year strategic plan of how to implement various uh, sustainability actions and through the you know, through the climate smart communities program but i think 10 years is something that is more um uh, is something that's more more feasible for for the complex time um fourth thing i was going to say is affordable housing i think this is one of the things that uh has worsened over 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 the time uh and it's much more acute um and there needs to be guidance in the commercial plan about that which currently isn't there in in the draft um the the walkable the walkable but not pedestrian plumbing aspect i think one thing that the comprehensive plan update the 2020 draft doesn't really get into is is uh, much about the streets and the sidewalks and i think to the extent that um you know you can get a sense of um you know what communicating what kind of the, the anticipated uh, improvements are which i got some from dan sarnoff uh, assistant manager rose manager about streets that you know have some funds tied up to do improvements. I think um, I think there needs to be more, uh, just more information and more uh, a little more structure to discussion on on, on on roadways and sidewalks, basic infrastructure, because that was that was the you know one of the top top priorities was, was <coughs> the condition of roads and streets and sidewalks among people. So um, those are the few things I want to add to that, and then 
Um, I also, yeah, I, I, when I, I, that, those are some of the things I tend to add to the presentation, and, and that's I'm going to continue thinking about how this informs the the, the update of the 2020 draft of the progress plan. So. And I think the, the only other item I have is this is an updated schedule for the conference plan update. Um, but also, if there's any other, any other questions or comments about this, I think um, I'd be happy to create a, uh, uh, add the trustee Rollins has requested the, the numbers of people. I can, I'll be happy to provide that to you. Uh, any other questions or comments or requests? Uh, anything you'd like to add? No, thank you. Uh, so the timeline. So you, meet, you meet the traffic committee tomorrow, and then you come back to us in what, in February? Yeah, I realize February 10th is I'm um, finally taking a vacation, um, so I need to just shift that a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's that's the latest approximate timeline for now since I realized that we're looking at it. We're looking at the changes from looking at from, from a March to April public hearing. So, well, let's not go. Right. Let's not go any later than that. Okay, this has to be wrapped up. I agree. Is there any questions for Neil? Just enjoy your vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mayor, yeah. I have one point that I wanted to mention to Neil. Um, so last week I informed the board that we did receive grant monies for um, comprehensive plan update with the sustainability focus to the Planet Smart Communities program. Uh, $34,175. So that was a grant application, I think you and our former planner put together. Right. Before COVID. Right. Definitely before COVID. Oh, yeah. So we just received that money. We oh, yeah. grant received that money. Yep. Oh, great. That was some of that now. So you can come back maybe the 27th. So, um, Meet the 13th and the 27th. Well, I think in the past we've had to have a, if, especially if we're going over a, a draft mm -hmm. of the thing, we, we, we have a special meeting. That's usually what we've done in the okay. past. So these, but the dates here do reflect the typical um, you know, first and third mm -hmm. Monday schedule. So it's going to be a special meeting. Okay, special okay. meeting in February. So. Right, thank you, Neil. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Great. See you. Okay, you know, we're going to skip uh, down to the committee for the environment. Uh, dedication of Rock, pardon me, dedication of Rockland uh, Pocket Preserve. Uh, this is on the corner of Rockland and Waverly. Is it Rockland and Fayette. Rockland and Fayette, I'm sorry. Rockland and Fayette, uh, the committee uh, took a piece of land that was on a slope and it was the village's land and they cleared it uh, with, with a lot of uh, uh, backbreaking labor and volunteers and uh, with some help from the village staff that removed the really big, uh, big debris. Uh, and it's been, there's been trees planted and there's going to be other plantings. And why don't you, why don't you give it, why don't you? Um, so, um, <clears throat> I sent, uh, the village board and, and Lou, um, you know, just hand it out first and then talk okay, at the mic. Here you go. Awesome. So thank I, you. The, the folks at home won't hear you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> They're all stuck together. Here, I'll do it. Here, here you go. Thank you. Thank you. And update. Thanks for that. Much. I have this. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Jerry. And, yeah. So, um, you know, our committee, one of our initiatives is to, um, uh, you know, work on open space, creating more open space for the village. And we had, we had spotted this, um, this piece of land. Uh, the, the three lots in, in their entirety are close to 10,000 square feet if you go all the way down to the river. The location is basically the corner of Rockland and Fayette. Fayette follows along um, the Sheldrake and then it, it curves around. So it's a piece of, of land that was completely, um, I think the, um, 
the DPW was um, mowing it a couple times a year, but there was it was completely overgrown with invasive plants. And it, but given its location right by the sheldrake, uh, we felt it was a good spot for potential um, nature preserve and a pollinator area that would be good for nature and um, but also would could provide quiet recreation for people who live in that neighborhood. And um, you know, uh, as some of you know, there are actually significant uh, numbers of people that live in the industri so-called industrial area. Um, so uh, we, um, you know, we got permission from, you know, Jerry to see what we could do there. And um, over two weekends, it's it's outlined in this letter, which I do believe is in your in, on, attached to your agenda. So over a couple of weekends in um, October, we got high school students, members of our committee, people from the neighborhood, all kinds of people out to clear out and dig out these invasives, which were really sub substantial, um, you know, with deep, deep root systems. So we did a lot of work. And then on a following weekend, we, we went in with a smaller group um, and uh, with the help of Bedford Healthy Yards, which has a lot of expertise, we, and <clears throat> at that point, basically donated plants. We planted, um, in excess of um, 600 uh, native plants and just you know bucketfuls of um, of native seeds that various members had collected that you know all, all, that was all donated material and um, so you can see uh, from the initial site plan we we made some changes we actually planted a larger area than we had originally intended to. Uh, we had a meeting with Jerry and his team um, on November 9th to, you know, to look at it. Uh, at that point, they um, did some tree trimming, uh, some of the trees along the shelter right there. And um, we also, we cited where we could potentially put benches. And, um, and because of that, we, we added an additional sort of curve around path. And which is all, and we, the, uh, D the DPW, um, brought us uh, wood wood mulch, wood chips, and we got another, there's been, you know, many weekends and, and mm -hmm. hours subsequent to that, and we had a group that went and laid out all that wood mulch along the paths. So it looks pretty good. Um, so two of the trees are in, Those, these are all through the tree committee, by the way, and the others that are coming, um, hopefully early April, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm not sure yeah. what the timing of that is. Yeah. Okay, um, so no. th those will be, so we've got two oaks in sort of near the entrance, which is on Fayette there. And then we have two American cherries that are coming and three more um, and three willow trees. And then um, through the DEC, actually, I put it in order today for bare root shrubs. The DEC gives very good discounts. So we've got um, Virginia Rose coming, um, uh, some viburnum, some dogwood shrubs and some pussy willows that are coming. And let me just say that part of um, the, a lot of the intentionality with the plantings that we've done is to fight back the invasives, particularly as you go near the sheldrake, there's a lot of knotweed, which is, if you know knotweed, it's a really a virulent um, invasive. It's very hard to get out, but we dug a lot of it out and we we're gonna keep cutting it and digging it but what we're planting in that those areas mm. is native plants, but particular ones that have that are very aggressive natives that will fight back and hold their own against the um, the knotweed and so forth. So what we're asking, I don't want to take too much time, and it's all in this letter, is for this village-owned land to be dedicated as a park, and uh, really just to uh, formalize it. So that we can have a sign, so that we can go ahead and put benches, uh, so that there can be litter pickup. It's not going to involve, I don't think, much expenditure or effort on the part of the village, the because there's going to be no grass. It's all going to be planted. In the front is uh, lower pollinating flowering plants, and then in more of the interior where it'll be shady, it's going to be more shrubs and things like that. So um, I don't think there's, you know, with with the exception of probably mowing that lower pollinator area once or twice a year. I don't foresee that there's going to be a whole lot of um, 
effort or expense on the part of the village. You know, we're asking for a sign, but it's really just to protect it and to say, this is the park. And also I will just anecdotally say, you know, we had all these people come out to help us. Well, who are you all? And um, I had this one girl who said, well, I live right over here, uh, a couple blocks away. And this is the first time anybody's done anything down in here. And uh, my grandmother lives in the house next door and my mother grew up over here. And um, I taught ESL for a number of years. I had students that live in the neighborhood. So this is some, a place for quiet recreation where people can come down and sit and look at the river flowing by and look at the beautiful flowers and enjoy themselves. So I hope you um, you know, will um, dedicate I, it as a park. I just well, I have a question for Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what is the process for dedicating park? Do we do we know? Yeah, you just have to call a park. And do, I had one case actually where we just put up a sign without doing anything else, and the court's held to a park. Okay, we can but handle that. You understand, a <laughs> park means you can never use that property for anything else. Yeah, that's what's going to ask you. Is state legislature. Right. So, do we, okay. My question then becomes: Do we do it via resolution or via local law? Resolution. Resolution. Okay. I thought this was just a housekeeping thing. Yeah. Okay. And so, and I did write also in here that this particular site was actually named in the Marinek LWRP, which goes back to the 80s, saying that, you know, spotting it and noting it as a potential area where it would make a good park for, um, you know, residents to enjoy. I, I was down there a couple of weeks ago with the, the woman from the Audubon Society. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's just really delightful. Anybody else who would have driven by there, and I drove, drove by it many times, it's, it's a vacant lot, overgrown. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have given a second thought. Rubbish. <laughs> but, Cement pile. Yeah. Right? But, but, but Kate, Kate saw uh, a, a something there, yeah. and, um, and, uh, and I think it started out as, an, as a place for um, butterflies, for the butterfly project, yeah. right? Because yeah. it had that, uh, that, that milk, milkweed. We, we spotted that there was a lot of, I mean, milkweed is a wild weed, and we identified 133 milkweed plant that were just growing along the perimeter and it's so they started by mm -hmm. uh, by protecting the milkweed and then and then it grew into that and and, and it's a, it's a, just a terrific sure idea i, th I think it's um right. it's very impressive we need places we need more locations for benches so it's good to have more land yeah. <laughs> uh, you know and it's not a large area but you know there is there is um uh you know scientific uh you know, studies that show that, you know, when you plant into an area with native plants, you do create, you do um, absorb more water and hold more mm. water. Um, so I think even from that standpoint, in terms of flood mitigation, it's, a, it's taking you in the direction you want to go. So is everybody fine with uh, putting a resolution on the agenda for the next Board of Trustees regular meeting at uh, the mm -hmm. end of the month? Yes. Declaring yes. it the park? Yes. 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 Good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, the next uh, committee for the environment is uh, want to use a five thousand dollar New York State ERDA grant to conduct a gasoline powered garden device buyback program. This uh, this is something they want to do. I don't know if you if if uh, you want to speak to it. Well, I'll speak to it. Well, what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. I did. Hey. Uh, here we received, or the village received through the efforts of the Emma Smart Communities Program, $5,000 grant from DPC to do something environmentally. But the DPC requires that the money be used for environmental and social interest. Can you talk with the community about what's the best way to use the $5,000 and have different ideas where the census approach would be very effective to do what some other communities have done, which is incentivize homeowners to um, trade in, in fact, their gas-powered leaf blowers and gas-powered <laughs> lawn mowers for electric reasons. They're less polluting, they're less energy intensive, and they're quieter. They're much better for the environment, but they're expensive. So the idea is to give people, and I think the idea was $100 to trade in your old um, gas powered unit for an electric unit, you get a hundred dollar. Each person who did this would get a hundred dollar or some similar number of credit. So you give out 50 of them. Pardon? You 50. would be able to give out 50 of them. Yes, 50. Yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, 
we haven't worked out, I don't think, the specifics or the mechanics, but I, the, the first step was that we were told that the village had to authorize it because it's technically village money. So we didn't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it until we got approval from the village for the concept. And we're thinking of a vendor, um, a local vendor, not necessarily because we don't have a hardware store here in the village. We think of a you know, local hardware store to, to help us participate uh, and effectuate this program. I'm fine with everybody else. Fine with it? Yeah. Yeah. Great idea. Okay. So you're two for two, runners in scoring position. So. <laughs> Go for the third one. Leave the leave program. So uh, to cut to the chase, uh, a couple of months ago, the committee passed the following two resolutions. The committee for the environment and the committee of trustees to adopt the policy to move unmulched weeds around trees and in flower beds to protect beneficial insects and fireflies and to mulch weeds on lawns to attain their nutrients wherever practical. By doing so, the village will lead by example and will further encourage homeowners to do the same on their properties. The village should provide signage about the practice to educate residents. So this is a new thinking about lawn and lawn care and and, and horticulture management is not collect leaves, put them in a pile, spruck them somewhere, and compost them maybe or maybe not. If you can leave them in place. It provides ground cover, it provides nutrients, it saves money because you're not taking leaves away. And it's really, I wouldn't say it's quite a no brainer, but it's pretty close to a no brainer. And we should be incur and, and we put in, we're practical. We understand that sometimes you have too many leaves to just mulch them all. But the concept is to the extent we can, we should, as a village, engage in this practice and encourage residents to do that. Jerry, what do you think? So we have been mulching leaves uh, for several years now. Um, and what we do is we have mulching plates on our mowers and we put them on in the fall. Um, and in the larger areas by Carver Island Park where there's a lot of trees dispersed, it's easy to mow the leaves right into the into the um, into the turf. What we do at, at um, what we do at Florence Park where there's a lot of pavement and and uh, and playground surface is that we have to blow those leaves off into uh, the turf areas, into the grass areas. And we will mulch them several times a year. So we're currently doing that now as a practice. We don't do it uh, at um, smaller pocket parks where there's nothing mm -hmm. to mow like Genimzio Park or, or the um, um, or Pitch Park or places like that. But we have been doing that um, to the extent that we can um, for David. We, that, that David was asking for. We can set, we set the example. What we're trying to do is maybe promote or hopefully promote in several different ways that we can do program for the property owner. I mean, there are people in this community that have small lots and they have very large lots. The people with the large lots should be blowing their leaves onto the grass while they're landscapers or themselves with their you know, riding tractors, mowing them themselves. I'm not sure why they're not doing that. Uh, I suspect that some people are doing that. I just don't know who they are. Um, and it's private, so it's not my business. But the reality is we can help promote the Lead the Leaves program to help people save money because it really does. Once we mow, and, and we've had demonstrations, when you mow the leaves a couple of times, they disappear. They go right into the turf and, and disappear. So I'm not sure what more we could necessarily do except promote it and push it. I just want to add a clarification that we may have skipped over yeah. is that what's kind of new here is the idea that that some of the leaves are not mulched, that they're actually left in oh, flower either. beds in an unmulched condition. No, we're not doing that. Yeah, because that okay. is where the fireflies okay. and various beneficial mm -hmm. caterpillars are living. So this is this is kind of a new thought. So we can do that yeah. if, if that's something that the environmental uh, that the uh, community of the environment wants us to try and do. We can do that. It's a little bit less work actually, and probably yeah. saving saving some time. I think it's all energy. Is yeah, not only environmental function, it saves the world. Yeah. yeah, it'll save us work, and and we can demonstrate that. Um, we can even um, at a point where next fall we're going through this and and saving leads into you know shrub beds to the extent we can possible. Take photographs, push it through our e newsletter, and, and those kinds of things. Just to demonstrate to people that 
it's it's a no brainer. Uh, we can do that if, if that's something that the community environment wants us to try and do. Okay. So give it a, give it a give it a, an experimental try. Yeah, we can we can do that. Yeah, yeah, and, and we have truck beds all over the place. The truck beds all over. Jerry, you're right. Big payoff is not a village doing it. Yeah, that's the ultimate. That's a big why they're not doing it. I'm not sure. They have their equipment and they have their, their procedures, and they know they're not they're not. I, I, about these. I used to be. I used to be. I used to. Have, I, you know, we we. I did all that. Gathered the leaves. Got rid of the leaves, and then in the spring. Bought bags of mulch and put mulch down in the flower beds. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I, I didn't even think why I was doing it. I just did it. Is there a way to incentivize um, landscapers to do this? Because I'm not sure that, I mean, some landscapers probably read the village mm -hmm. newsletter, but many are not from the community. It would be necessarily the homeowner asking them to do mm -hmm. it. Similar. Yeah. So Ellen Silver right. has, has mentioned to us, many of us, many times that she works hand in hand with her mm -hmm. landscaper to try to. Do some of the things that the community for the environment has really pushed you know others to do, and there's a lot of pushback from the landscapers. She admits it freely that there's a lot of pushback from the landscapers. So I yeah. think pushing it yeah. to the homeowner, asking the homeowner to kind of create that friendship or or partnership with their landscaper, um, you know, it's less work for them. I'm not sure why. I get it. Uh, I just as a recovering uh -huh. landscaper myself, I understand yeah. that. The longer I spend on the property, the more money I think I'm going to be able to charge the property owner. Mm -hmm. So it could be part of that, but you know, it's a tough one. We could, if the landscapers want, um, I don't know. I don't have a I have a relationship with some big tree companies in the village, mm -hmm. but not necessarily. Okay. Well, I think it, this is like uh, residents have to say to the landscaper, yeah, right. you know, I, I want this done and I want it done this way. And, and maybe there'll be some enterprising. Uh, Landscape will say, you know what, I want to start an environmental landscaping company. Right. So one of the things the committee can do is take um, under advisement the idea of what what we can come up with for a, yeah. a plan to incentivize yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come back landscapers to and, and private residents to do this. Yeah. Yeah, we can provide the the, 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 the example, David. We can provide the photographs. We can, we can do all of that. We can provide the location where people can see what it looks like just you know um but yeah that, that that's what we can do um maybe the committee can do the other part of it so what we're asking for the community is establish a policy that is to be the resolution or whatever but that's it's that's what the, the, the board actually looks for where did we believe come from where did that program come from do you remember so the was available i'm not sure I mean, it's, it's kind all of over. That's ubiquitous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, as the environmental movement is evolving, people are realizing that you know, this is important. So, but Dan and I were not very creative, but we're very good at taking other people's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, if you can help us with that, that would be fine. Well, we did. I think we need an individual program. So, you know, we, we did the library. To that's we did it. one. We did we one did. before the pandemic. We did a demonstration mulching. out here, mulching. Yeah, we did yeah. mulching of the leaves. This is a little bit different. This is leaving the leaves in the shop. That's the big. That's the yeah, big takeaway I'm getting tonight. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's. But it's going to be both because it, yeah. because yeah. you yeah. know you're not going to leave leaves all over your yard. You're going to leave leaves in the beds, and you're going to do some mulching yeah. in. So for the for homeowners, it's going to be both. Yeah. So the other part of the resolution, the other the second resolution we passed was to. Um, have the Department of Public Works include in their informational brochure uh, information about this. And that's pretty simple, I think. Sure. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd say you three for three. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, would we put something on the uh, on the agenda for uh, instructing the DPW or? No, generally. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah. That's okay. We're just in the quick resolution for the legal use and the the board supports the lead release program and then can right. uh, provide some basic information about what the lead release program So, Dan, can we have that for next? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll, we'll, so, we will need to put it on the agenda. I guess so. All right. Uh, if you, we did 1A, 2A, review of village code to include requirements for fair and affordable housing for all zones in a village. Where are we with this? So, I, I gave you in tonight's agenda. Yeah, actually, the, uh, the county 
Right. Fair housing. Fair housing. Fair housing. Fair housing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so you want us to take the substance of that and put it into the village code. So it applies in every zone of district. I wasn't sure exactly what you want to do. Yeah, I think, I mean, that was, this was right before you took the seat on the board, I think. But I think it, to ha have it apply to all <coughs> codes, all zones, not just the ones we'd applied it to, and to um, make it as, in your phrase, as liberal as possible, like mm -hmm. as strong as possible. But that should be requiring a much fairer yes. affordable housing, consistent with the numbers in the county. So, uh, so Aaron, how you talk about like how does this affect an off five zone? Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's my question. Sorry. How does this affect an R5 zone, a single family, small single family zone? No, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't think it does. Well, it, only if there were a subdivision in a small single family yeah. zone that was five units or I over. Don't, I don't have it in front of me. Okay. We'll put it together for next year. All right. Sounds good. And I personally, I don't know whether we can do this. I would love it if it could be more deeply affordable i understand that that's not something we were able to accomplish previously but what do you mean by deeply affordable that the that the median income is is low the income levels that, it, that these units apply to are lower so right now when you talk about affordable it's 80 percent of the median uh county income which, which is, is actually kind of high it just, yeah, yeah you know no, I, I, yeah. Just yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> I just so, wanted to yeah i just wanted to try and get it it should be more yes. deeply affordable, which okay. sometimes, you know, we're always told developers can't do it, that we had the conversation around the moratorium, well, but we can. I think we can. Well, it's been a while since we did the mm -hmm. affordable housing for which zone it was. Three years, yeah. Why do we not just not want to extend that across the board? I think, well, I think I would like it to be more affordable than that. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe that's a way of structuring it. it. It was different zones. It was only for multifamily, but maybe, maybe you, maybe that's a good structure to work with. You're the law writer. <laughs> we just had the idea. Okay, um, why what, 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 what you kind of give us two options? And the number we can tweet. Mm -hmm. Once you have the law draft in front of you, you can yeah. read it. Are there? Are, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is this? Is this? Um, strong enough and are there places in it that we we could we could make our um our ordinance more stringent than the counties well strong enough in, in terms of how much affordable housing we have to provide mm -hmm. that's a that's a judgment i mean you reach a point it could require that every building be 100 percent affordable mm -hmm. but no one's going to build a building right so that's a judgment you have to make mm -hmm. uh it's not a drafting question that's a in, in judgment, you may want to get some planner. Well, you, you, you look, I guess it's about finding the right, um, the right, um, developer, developer because yeah. sometimes we're it, it's people coming to us saying they want to develop, but it's also sometimes it's us looking for developers to come in who are willing to do or create affordable housing, maybe 100% or even 50. So, oh, you know, and also we should think about incentivizing the developer. Which is what we took out of the war in the past. You come up with percentages, and you know, not as deep, you know, it ties back to the issue that the county had with our that, uh, 15 years ago. And with that whole uh, lawsuit, the village of Meredith was uh, called an ineligible community. Mm -hmm. uh, my recollection is not necessarily that we were ineligible because we had met. Uh, requirements for the number of units, but because of the demographics of the village. And I think I actually have asked Neil about that. And I, I, I remember you wrote, you know, I think you may have really touched on your phone and had some more knowledge about that. I'm not going to take the spot, but I, I remember bringing that up. I can't remember if that was something like that. I, really, I remember talking to Sarah Brown about that. Uh, so we'll, I, just remember, I don't remember though that. All right. Um, we got to keep. Is there any benefit to Neil and Bob working on this at all? Since Neil is working on the affordable housing component of the comp plan, I think, I think we should just have Bob draft the law, and you could look at it maybe after Bob drafted it, or if we have a a, a planner in the future. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do we get in two weeks. Thank you. Uh, the parking uh, provision for pre permit parking for the American Legion Community Council and Center, Emily did LMC TV in the public library. Now, LMC TV is no longer located over here. So I'm thinking they probably don't need 15 parking passes. Mm -hmm. Right? Because everything's at a uh, town center now. Oh, no. Some meetings, right? Yeah, yeah. but they don't need 15. Aren't yeah. they moving um, to uh, Mamarnock Avenue? Yeah, but that, uh, let's deal with that when they move to that. Okay. That, that hasn't happened. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what are we doing here, Jerry? Uh, basically, we're looking for to develop relationship, guiding documents, something along those lines where if we're going to provide an entity where Free parking for staff and, and others in their organization that, um, that we have the ability to ask for something in return. That's what we're looking for. Okay. That's what we're looking for. And this document does that? I'm hoping that this document does it. Bob? So, yeah, we've got, a, we've got a model contract essentially. The agreement, right? Model mm -hmm. agreement that can be uh, tailored to each. Um, each relationship. Mm -hmm. There has to be the key is from the legal perspective, there has to be a quid pro quo. Right. right. The quid is the parking. We need to know what the quo is for each of the yeah. how much quid and what's the quo. Right. A good kind of quid. So what does, you know, did we if, if we what, what do you need us to do here tonight? Do you just, just say this is okay, and then go and do what you have to do, like the American Legion? Just to see if you have any general objections to this form. No, I, I think it's a good idea. I, you know, I think American leaders have been waiting long enough. And, you know, they're good neighbors. And anytime we need to go in there, they let us in there. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the case for most of most of the entities listed on the yeah. agenda. Yeah, that's the case for most of them. And so once we have an agreement, then legal's more comfortable with what we're, what we're doing. But it's also, it's also clear and spelled out, right? That's what we're looking for. Right. So you'd have to, I guess, in the model of that. Just let me go to the deputies and, and kind of work these things out. You and know, then bring us each individual contract to approve? Is right. Individual yeah. agreements, yeah. So this is just a framework. That's right. Jerry will make a deal. Mm -hmm. okay. the contract, the make an offer. Make an offer. And I, I, I just want to say LMC TV is listed as five, five and six, not 15. So that's that's better. I thought so 15 and I so think that's we, um, M1. I think that's what you saw. Oh, sixteenth. Yeah. So, so um, uh, with LMC TV, we typically uh, event by event we provide them um, free space for parking. Mm -hmm. So if they have to put their van or a staff mm -hmm. member in a parking spot on the avenue, or, or we have do that. Obviously, we have a mechanism to charge them for that, but we do waive that. We do that. So those are the kinds of things. Just for all the meetings they attend. Yeah, that's and beneficial to have here as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, we can just give the guy who's here a, 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 a placard. No problem. Yeah. yeah. No problem. But at least we have an agreement yeah. with the mm -hmm. nonprofit yep. for something, you know, right. an understanding. All right. I'm, I'm, everybody's fine with that? Good. Yes. Good. Let's get that off. Good. Yeah. All right. D is being held. Yeah, Mayor, just on that note. The building department is reviewing that, reviewing the draft law, which mm -hmm. I have prepared. Okay. So uh, we should be uh, sure uh, the building inspector wants to comment, and we should be waiting for the next meeting to consider that. Okay. Sounds Thanks. good. Mm -hmm. uh, wireless, First Amendment uh, to wireless technology facility lease mm -hmm. agreement for the Fenimore Road cell tower. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, right now, we, we do make significant revenue on the event on the lease. It's tied to what they're making, so it does go up as their rents go up. So, yeah, they're really motivated to negotiate. Yeah. What is the reason for doing the, renewing the lease now? Uh, they have a meeting uh, with their vendors putting on, I think it was direct to agree, and I think they're doing for a long term for those that back here. I know that um, uh, in the email that was uh, received earlier today about uh, 
first few emails. Yeah. Um, go ahead, no, if you had it. No, I just, just basically, I, and then I look, so the planning board, so we approved this, the, every five years, they have to renew a special permit. Correct. And, I, and um, I'm not quite understanding what the parameters of that are, like what the reporting, I, I, it's my understanding that there's testing that has to be done for these cellular things. I looked at the planning board meeting, it was like sometime last fall and I, I, I didn't, I, I can't say I did a comprehensive review, but the planning board recommended that we approve, I guess, the special permit, the renew the special permit. So we did, that was like in October. So now we're being asked to give, to extend it another 30 years, basically. So, and with, a, and there's a change in the claw. First of all, they, it's not, it doesn't seem to me to be urgent because they've got another 14 or so years on their current contract. Um, but the, it changes from, the only difference I can see is that now when they renew, they have to give us 60 days notice that they're renewing. Yes. It's going to change to, so that it's just automatically renewed. Unless, um, unless, unless we say, unless we, um, say yeah, right, different. which puts the onus on the village to keep tabs on this, um, which I'm always happy to have the onus on somebody else, not us. Um, we do have a, um, a, a, a schedule of all our contracts right. to show what's coming in. And this is a 30 year extension. It's a 30 year, but it's a 30 year extension with five year renewals. And then within those renewals, they have to have testing. Well, that well, that's no, it, that's it, so. it just says within all applicable laws. And I, I we don't know what that, I don't know what that testing so, is. That's where my name. In the zoning code, the wireless telecommunications, mm -hmm. wireless telecommunications facility mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. Use an acronym because it's something different uh, to a lot of people. Um, but uh, there are requirements in there. Um, the reason that um, the uh, staff recommended that the planning board conduct the uh, public the hearing on the renewal is because the way that our local code is written says that the uh, governing body. Um, or, or the appropriate board has to review it. Uh, in, if it was on private property, that would be the planning board. And there are multiple uh, mm -hmm. cellular facilities on private property in the village. There's only two on public property, the this one Harbor and Island. Harbor Island Park. Um, and they had, uh, within the last year or so, uh, conducted a renewal process for a site at 1600 Harrison Avenue. So given that they had done it, that they had experience mm -hmm. with it, uh, that's why it was staff recommended the board agreed that the planning board do the hearing and make the recommendation to the board. Uh, now, as far as what's required, it is spelled out in the code. I, I don't know what it says. I looked, I, I looked at the code and it just says all applicable laws. Yeah. So, the, and mean, the planning I mean, board didn't, didn't get any information about testing. So just based on- Testing so, of what? But you have to certify that you're not get, admitting you know, bad it's things like or hard things. I'm yeah. not too fond of wireless so, towers. So because of energy that it gives off and there are studies, so my, but I understand the need. So my question, and, and maybe uh, maybe we're on the same page here, is know. that three? we got three, maybe three emails today with people who were concerned, two people, I don't know, who were concerned about this issue. It seems to me like it's not urgent because the, their contract isn't up for another 16 years. Well, I mean, the, the issue that was cited were you know, the health impacts mm -hmm. of cellular facilities. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they, this is all under the auspices of the documentation. Health communications have to wait for that. Mm -hmm. And in that, uh, it basically said that uh, local communities had to have a zoning that allowed for the siting of wireless telecommunications facilities, and they could not use the health impacts uh, as part of the consideration. That being said, I mean the you know there, there, there are studies on this, and all the agencies say, well, we need more studies. 
but you know, I, I provided to you a copy of something that was prepared by the FCC, um, which basically says something to the effect that uh, uh, you know the, uh, the FCC permits an effective radiated power of 500 watts per channel. And this is radio frequency, which differs from electromagnetic, electromagnetic frequency, which what people think of power. Mm -hmm. It's not the, mm -hmm. the same type of technology. Uh, what uh, so it says it's up to 500 watts per channel. Uh, you know, it says typically uh, the majority of cellular or PCS sites in urban and suburban areas operate at an ERP of 100 watts per channel or less. Uh, an ERP of 100 watts corresponds to radiated power, an actual radiated power of five to 10 watts. And the way that the these things work is the, the strongest emission is literally right next to it. So by the time it even hits the ground, it's 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 fairly just been, it's kind of like a uh, I think like an umbrella. The, the strongest is the air right around this, the site and it just dramatically decreases. Uh, and I, I was not planning on giving a treatise on you know radio frequency and how it works. Right? And this is my preliminary research, but uh, as far as that, I mean, I think there are guidelines for. Uh, what is considered and how you zone and cite these things. Um, the, the, was it, the health impacts, um, even the Council for the American Cancer Society, which essentially uh, mirrored what um, the uh, FCC guidance says, and I can provide that to you as well. Uh, so that's kind of the, my statement on, on the, the health impacts. I, I'm. <laughs> You know, we're not going to make a decision about whether or not this is healthy or not. I don't think that's not within our area of expertise. I just, I've just, we're asked, being asked to renew a contract for an extra 30 years. <laughs> we don't understand, I mean, it doesn't even say they have to get a renewal in this contract. It's being, it's, so, I, so. That's an individual goal. You can't, no, con no contract could grant them, uh, a dispensation for so if, you're legal, you're, so uh, if we don't renew it, then it comes down. Is no, that well, no. no? So then, I mean, if, if, if we don't renew it, they still have a lease. Yeah. Um, but they obviously, I think they want us to negotiate in good faith. We're, 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 we're not renewing, we're extending, we're amending, and the amendment the amendment changes the term slightly and extends it by 30 years. That's, mm -hmm. that's what. I don't, what's the motivation about? Why do they, why do we want it? Why do they want it? What's the benefit? What nothing? I don't get it. Well, I mean, as far as the benefit, I mean, I think most people use cell phones nowadays. What's the impetus for the company? Oh, well, I think the impetus was because they they're looking to bring on a new carrier, direct TV. That they, I think that their agreement with them is going to necessitate an, uh, an increase in the uh, the the term. They probably need more time on their their needs to be able to look their. Why? It could increase their revenue and thereby increasing my revenue. Oh, correct. Mm -hmm. Can I just make a comment? Mm -hmm. Because I think you need to distinguish between two things. Mm -hmm. One is the village's land use regulatory authority, mm -hmm. and the other is the village's authority as a property mm -hmm. owner. Mm -hmm. The Telecommunications Act part that Dan was talking about uh, applies to the village's regulatory authority. And the basic rule is that the village cannot deny application for approval of a, a telecommunication mm -hmm. tower because of the health effects, as long as yeah, the, the uh, tower satisfies the regulatory requirements the federal government has set for those emissions. Okay. And, and this was just a bit of a report, I'm sure they did, saying they satisfy those requirements. The village as landowner can choose or not choose to lease land to these companies. And, we're, and on this particular land, it's not, that's not right. really. Okay. Except that, as I understand it, this lease goes on for another 14 years already. Yes. That's right. right. So right. You're not gonna, that's why you're not going to get rid of it. No, I would, even on. when I said get rid of it, it's like after the lease is done, it's not like it's going to come down. Right. Um, well, it could. If it, it could if you don't so, renew it, but so, it, but it has another so Basically, they're asking us to extend it so they can hook a, a, another. Uh, Client and uh, and that would be more money in our pocket. Presumably. Presumably. And are they building? Are they planning on building? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, are they planning on building on 
on top of what is already existing? It would be located on the existing tower. Just like another, yeah, like another, yeah, another like another antenna, or something. antenna on it. Yeah. Yeah, equipment, yeah. Yeah, they're not going to build a separate tower. Fan of it all, but I, I would just really like to make sure that, you know. That, that they're complying with what the testing is. I, the, the backup documentation for the planning board was just like, we're in compliance. It was like a letter from the provider said, saying we're in compliance. It didn't but have it, any kind of a report. I think they said that it, they are in compliance according to um, federal law, right? But they've, they've got the permit now. Yes. So, so they've got this permit now, back, but it, right? no, but, 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 Either do way. we need a procedure to, I mean, uh, do we need a procedure to, to make sure that the, 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 whatever it seems like the planning board's review was pretty light because they didn't i don't think they realized that they needed that and maybe they don't need to look at the specific details it just seems are we getting all the protections that we could get for the village with this contract and before we renew it for another 30 years which is now essentially 45 years well, do we want to first of all that they got a permit in the fall that's for five years from us Correct. based on years. a recommendation for the planning board right right but they're going to have to come back in five years so, and so there's nothing presently before the board no regulatory process presently before the board through which to review well, yeah whether they satisfy the, but can the we stipulate requirement. can we stip i mean can we stipulate that that's what needs to happen five and a, four and a half years, years from now four and a half years from now i mean it seems like they're asking us for something so we might be able to so, ask for something yeah, exactly. if, if they're asking us for something we should get something in other words uh, my understanding is when you open up a contract there's a reason you open it up Right. I mean, for us, so it's using more testing the ground, yeah. testing the the yeah. antennas, yeah. testing. Yeah. I, even know, I don't understand what the testing is that they do. There is some sort of testing, and I don't understand what. I, like, Could, can you ask them to send us their most recent test results? Mm -hmm. And let's hold this off until we see them in two weeks. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I don't feel like it's yeah. a burden for them because they've no. got this long lead. No, they're, they're, they're not losing anything. You can money. ask. I, I would like to get more money for them. Of course, yeah. but I, I was. <laughs> so, yeah, so ask them to send us their most recent test results. Thank you. Yeah, sure, we'll Thank send you. it, but. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll wait. We'll take that off the regular meeting and we'll wait until we get the. We'll do the same thing with next week. If we get the results, then we'll talk about it again. Okay. Fair enough, everybody? Yeah, you got it. Enough. Enough. Okay, Solomon here. No more. Maybe we'll all know more by next uh, week. Taylor's Lane encroachment. We're holding that. Any new news on it? We need to survey, right? The survey is in order. Survey says. Yep. I, Surveys I, uh, We're going to have Lavella, who's our, our contractor, our ranking on site. They're going to prepare a survey. I believe they're scheduled to take care of that. Okay. Did, who did the uh, landowner survey? So you're talking about a title report? Or is, is that what they, they didn't send us a survey? survey. Okay, no. all right, all right. Say no more. Uh, Committee for the Environment, we went through that. Uh, scheduling a meeting to review capital budget plan, no backup. All right, it, let's just get out our phones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I got. I'm ready to go here. What, what, what day we want to do this? All right. Make it easy, big fella. Talk to me. Um, this is an evening, right? We should have done this with Neil here too. How about how about January 30th? It's a Monday night. Um, could it be before seven? Because the arts council is meeting at seven. Well, let's do it at five. That's fine. Oh, Me. why we love we love five o'clock meetings, don't we? Five fifteen. <laughs> that helps. That helps me. Five fourteen. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you said five. Well, you said January 30th. Mm -hmm. January 30th, yeah. All right. It's a fifth Monday. It's a fifth Monday, yeah. Uh, back to back Mondays. Yes, that's the lucky one. Uh, so <laughs> that's going to be a uh, capital budget meeting. Right. Make it up. And, uh, so Staff, is that all right with you? Is that 5.15 or 5 o'clock? Okay. Can you do 5 o'clock? No, I could do 5 o'clock. I don't know. When you get I was just joking. Like 5 o'clock. <laughs> so 5 o'clock. And that'll be probably a couple hours, right? Yeah, so only till seven. Well, let's work expeditiously. Mm -hmm. Well, because of the Arts Council? Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, I think this is probably more important than that. Well, you don't want to just... <laughs>
All right, let, let, let's, let's just start. We, we have a date. Okay? We have a, let, don't, don't, disregard. A lot of trouble here. Well, this is a big deal, though. What's the date? Yeah. January 30th. January 30th, 5, five. o'clock. You guys all right? Yes. Here, right? Here. 5 o'clock, you got it. <laughs> you and me both. Okay, well, that's good. That's done. Uh, election cycles, terms, term limit changes. All right, this is um, the uh, uh, legislation that was prepared when the item originally came up uh, before the previous board uh, to um, synchronize the village elections with the federal schedule, They're biannual elections, and extend the, the terms of office from two to four years. Um, I think the, uh, there's a consensus to go forward with that. Uh, and uh, the, the, there are various logistical issues that need to be worked out as how we would arrive at that, uh, at that uh, uh, location where we would be able to ha have those, uh, you know, like, you know, who, what, how would it work? In other words, so, so Bob, uh, how would that, how, how, how would it work? When, when, if we, if we, if we, if we synchronize the elections to the federal schedule and extended the terms, we obviously yeah. want to, some things would need to have to change because some people are now synchronized to the, uh, to the off year election. So how would that work? Terms get extended. For, for example, there would be an election this year. Yeah. The, two, the mayor and the trustee elected this year would have three year terms. Oh, for, a, two. So for one year, for all to, to get it into the cycle. So then it'd be on 20, 26. Mm -hmm. And then the three trustees who were elected last year would run next year, even in 2024, and then they'd be on a four year. Now, now mm -hmm. as we discuss this, it, there may be some consideration that uh, we might want to. Um, uh, make differentiate between the, the the four trustees and the mayor. In other words, maybe the four trustees would run for would serve for four years, and the mayor would run only serve for two. Um, and then, ideally, that would mean ideally what you would want to arrive at would be uh, on any given year the mayor would run with two two trustees on any, on any given election. So we would have to do another something else to sync that up. What is the benefit of having a, a the um? Uh, the mayor uh, term for two years and the trustee for four. Like, it's, what it's, is it may be something that comes, I mean, people um, may bring it up at the, uh, at the public hearing on it. I mean, I'm, I don't want to presume that, uh, that, that they want to, the people will accept, uh, you know, uh, everybody years. having four years, they might want to, uh, might want to change it. So I want to, I, I think we should, we should be open for input on that from the public. Well, you, we, before, before you, you, you have to have a law proposed, right? Uh, well, you, you have law. No, 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 no. Yeah. Just go ahead. So we have to decide how we want to do that, and then take the public hearing. And if we're persuaded to go another way, go another way. But at first, we have to decide amongst ourselves what we want in the law. Okay. We can't have a nebulous law before the public Understood. To discuss. All right. All right. So uh, yeah. I would understand. Yeah, I think you know that. If you make a substantive change as a result of public hearing, you have to start all of it. have a new law and a new public hearing. Got it. Understood. All right. That's how we got to version 21 of the tree law. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope that this won't take that it many. Take 21 versions. Uh, 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 okay. So, so I, I, I was able to, to, to follow the simplest thing is what you just described that uh, the, 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 the next, the, the, this, this last off year election ever that we have, it would be a one time term of three years to, to get us on the uh, on the biannual schedule. Right. Okay, so uh, I would uh, I would think that if we if we could prepare a law that does that, just to, and and that and that the board uh, express uh, whether or not it is in favor of of this concept of the biannual elections and an extension of uh, of. Uh, of terms, I mean, and then and we, elections in even years. In yeah. even years, yeah. See, see, here's what's happening now. Since, especially since they changed the, uh, you know, it used to be the, uh, so a couple of years ago, the primary season mm -hmm. was in September, right? So they changed that to June. So an election ends in November, right? People get sworn in December. You got a new board in January, pretty much, right? And then. By the end of February, you're talking about petition, having mm -hmm. petitions signed uh, to run 
in that year's primary in June. In June. Yeah, right. It's, so it's like it, it's it a, never ends. It's a perpetual political game. And you know, I, you, you hope that people are making decisions based upon what's best for the community. But you know, people are always going to be thinking about, well, how's this going to affect, you know, how am I going to handle this when I run for re-election? And it doesn't give you a window mm -hmm. to really get stuff done without, you know, the sword of Damocles constantly being over your head. Because it 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 the, the way, and I understand why the state moved the elections, the primaries, mm -hmm. but it, it really, for people that have an election every year, it's just, it's, it's draining. I, I, I talked to hundreds of people about this and got uh, maybe a raised eyebrow from one or two um, and who, who were not, you know, who were not involved in political gamesmanship or, or the or the um or the, the existing mechanics of of of, uh, of the political machinery um uh i think it's i think it's a very popular concept people want clarity they want to know is it when the elections are and they want to go vote they don't want to be constantly um uh put upon to to now we got another thing i mean we, we just had two elections in this past year, we just sat down. Two different primaries. Two, yeah, yeah. yeah, and and then with an additional primary. Oh, and a school that, board election. And, and now we're weeks away from petitions again, and it's like, yeah, you know, give us a break. I mean, people, I, 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 I you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm afraid to knock on any more doors, get, get thrown out, get thrown down the porch stairs, you know. Yeah. It's a lot on the people who are running. It's a lot on the. Um, on a residence. So anyway, the League of Women Voters likes this, as has always liked it. Um, I think it's a good government uh, measure. Um, I, uh, I was the very first thing I brought up as, as a sitting trustee, and uh, and and it's and it's something um, I, I we we ran on during the primaries and the general election. I think it's very popular. And I think it, I think it's a I think it's uh, it's a no brainer. And I understand that other other jurisdictions around us might not share it, but I think they will they will fall into place. I think they will follow us. I think we can lead on this. You know, I mean, my only, I mean, and I'm in favor of it, but my only uh, concern, and this isn't a concern that will stop me supporting it, but I just want to voice it, is that, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I've talked a lot of people into running. And uh, <laughs> part of how I talked really? into running, oh. <laughs> part of how I talked them into running and said, it's only two years. And now it's going to be four years. So there's just, you know. Well, I mean, the only I mean, that's, a valid, that's a valid point. It is a valid commitment and, is, and then sometimes once you get into it, um, <laughs> you start to think about why did I get into it? But yeah. it, it, it is a valid point. And that's something that, that, that people who, who, who don't, who, who may say that, and it's a valid thing to yeah. consider. And I think it's something we need to consider. I, I think the benefits outweigh the cons. But can I say this in regards to your point is that if there was more, um of more education on what this job really entails then people will have a greater understanding of what they're getting themselves into sometimes sometimes it doesn't work out that way because sometimes you can know but not know but it's still it, it's still helpful to have a little bit more education so we we could put this on for um uh, i would for a, 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 could we put it on for a public hearing and i say something yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. So um, I don't. I really don't think this is a good idea for several reasons. Um, I think it's. Um, I think there should be a referendum before this happens. I think it's a little arrogant of us to just decide we're going to extend our terms. It's likely that whoever runs as a Democrat in the fall is going to win. Um, so that seems to exclude other parties, um, and I think that we need to be accountable. And I think two years is a fine is a fine term. And I understand that the cycle is, has sped up, but it's only that it, it simply means that we're gathering, we're going out for petitions in late February, early March instead of June. So it's you know a three month speed up and it means that that if there's a primary, the primary is in June, not in September. Um or not not in September. So um I uh, I, I think if there's any consideration of this, there should be real thought to doing it on the odd years, because it's not as if we're not going to have odd year elections. There will be an election every year in this village because we vote for our town representatives. 
in the off years, we vote for our county legislator in the off years. And in the fourth off year, we vote for our county executive. So there will still be an election every year in the village, just in, in this village. Village voters will still be asked to vote every year, just not for village offices. Well, from, from, from a practical response though, you know, the town hasn't had a contested election in over 20 years. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't. I, I I think that people are hardwired to vote in even numbered years. Uh, I think it gives more people the opportunity to vote. Uh, I you know if, if the other party is losing uh, losing voter uh, registration, I think that's part of uh, that party's fault. Uh, I don't, I don't think uh, you know that that's just the demographics of how things have changed. And um, and I understand what what we're going to say. There there are. There's always a downside to everything, but I think the upside is so much more because we're talking about voter turnout and um, and, and 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 more people having a say. Yeah. And 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 th this is subject to um, uh, to um, permissive referendum. Permissive referendum. If somebody feels so inclined they can, oh, to go yeah, through the work, they challenge it. Putting the onus on on voters on yes, a very quick that, on a very that's, quick that's democracy. On a very well, we, there's no reason why we couldn't. Adopt the law and require a referendum. No, I, I wouldn't do that. I mean, we we ran we ran on, on they got on, elected on this. Yeah. So so I mean, and we had we had forty eight uh, volunteers from the uh, high school who uh, who worked with us because of this um, because of this uh, issue. I mean, and we spoke with, with every with everybody we we met uh, about this. I mean, we were very clear that that we were going to do this the whole time. So it's not a it's not new. It's not a surprise. Uh, I said uh, to the, to the previous board a year ago when they decided not to have a referendum on it, not that because I think the legislation last year was to 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 put it forward and have a uh, permissive referendum. I, I believe that's what was being discussed, and they, and they decided not to do it then. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, we are going to vote on it because I'm running on it. And, um, exactly uh, verbatim quote. And so so I think this is. You know, I I uh, I didn't I didn't see a ripple in the pond on it. Not not a ripple in the pond. There may be, and there may be people who oppose it, but they're going to have to do the work to uh, to stop it. Right? If it passes, if it passes, if it passes. If it passes. So I, I I'm hearing there's a consensus to do this. To uh, to at least uh, yeah yeah sure. Because my part, if we need to take a do we need to take a roll roll call vote? No, Bob, are you gonna you gonna give us a draft law? Yeah. That's the that's the law. The only thing was yeah, the law was already done. Then, then what we want to do set a public hearing. Oh, sorry. We what we want to do is that the next Village of Americ regular Board of Trustees meeting at the end of January schedule public hearing. Okay. That's where people have a chance to read it, and uh, we we can't do that tonight. No, I, I wouldn't want to do that because um, okay. you, it, it's not on the agenda tonight. We Got it. Understood. Edit. Understood. And if people want to, you know, have a qualm with it, give them an opportunity to vent. You're right. I'm a, I'm in a, I'm in a. Pump the brakes. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> and, okay. And, and, I and, you waited a whole year for it. I agree. Really <laughs> but you, you're at the goal line. There we go. You're at the goal. Okay. So I'll you put it off as regular. Thank you. Regular meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was a. Uh, all right. Uh, All right. It wasn't easy, but we got through it. Uh, Board of Trustees meeting procedures. Oh, well, no, there was, um, oh yeah, yeah, right. Yep. It was here, wasn't it? Yeah, I have the second item on it. Initiative sponsorship? Show. Yeah. Okay, well, let me do the first one because I have that. Yep. Uh, removing adoption of agenda. This was put on uh, last year. Uh, and when it was put on, the uh, The, the reason was stated reason was that a lot of communities do this and you know it, it's very important that it's done and and I checked uh, with Nikom and there's not a village in New York who does this uh, there's nobody around us who does this uh, this is in, in my opinion uh, a lot of times in the previous board it has slowed down the meeting to have a uh, uh, discussion about you know what's what's going to go in what order so i would request that we take uh change the meeting procedure to uh get rid of the adoption of agenda 
Yeah, I never quite understood what that was. Well, perhaps, I just I, I think Tom that that you're that you're partially right in, in what you said, but I would also say that there was a a lot of shuffling around of the agenda, so things kept getting pushed back, 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 back. And um, one of the changes that happened was that um, we now have the date of, that when something first is put on That's the agenda, fine. and so we've been better about taking things in order and not shoveling things, not shoving things to the back or just not getting to them and then having an executive session that postpones it weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, and I think that um, if we're gonna remove the adoption of the agenda, which I don't think we need to do, I think it's actually a pretty good check to make sure, you know, I always go back to make sure that we didn't miss anything. Um, that as we update our um, agenda rules, that we make it clear that we really, try to stick to the order in which things were put on the agenda so things don't languish for a long let, time. Let me point something out. Things, things languished because we had, uh, in my view, people who filibustered whole meetings and we didn't get the stuff. And if you look and you look back at the stuff that got taken last, I always tried to make it my stuff uh, because I, I was trying to move things forward. I was trying to move the village uh, agenda forward. <clears throat> um, this was, in my opinion, this was about nothing but control. And this was a, another uh, instance where uh, the trustees, you know, didn't want the mayor to have uh, a position where he ran the meeting. Uh, I don't know what that previous board thought that the mayor's job was. Uh, they, I, I believe they wanted, in essence, a fifth trustee. And uh, we could all play musical chairs and every week somebody else could run the meeting. Well, I... Uh, I'm not done. Uh, there was no community that does this. Uh, and this was put forth uh, through misstatements. And those misstatements were easily proved. And uh, it, it should not stay on the agenda uh, because it, it, you know, Sometimes things need to move around because like tonight, we had Mr. Desai here. We, we had the Committee for the Environment here. But if you notice, we're almost through the whole agenda. You know, we have people now who are moving things along. Uh, people ask you know, for stuff to be taken earlier. Uh, I almost always uh, do that. But you know, it, it, it doesn't need to be you know, a, a vote every week you know, on adopting an agenda in front of us. And, and that, that's just an absurdity. I think that we've done a, a lot better in not letting things lang ling languish because we have put the dates on. So and, we I leave the dates on. and I think if we leave the dates on and we make sure that, because it's not my recollection that it was always your items that were pushed back. And I don't it think is. Oh, that's okay. So we, we, we don't have the same recollection and we were both there. We have different recollections, but I think that we have to respect the schedule and it's an, it's, we only have one thing from May. I mean, it's pretty much in the last three months. And so I think that we're, and, and the item that we have for May is parking permits that's been consistently worked on. It's just taken a while to do it. So I think as long as we just get through the agenda and keep the dates when we put something on the agenda, that's been a good structure for us and let's try it. So what do you think? I agree, making sure that we um, stick to the schedule and not push things back, but I don't need to adopt the agenda. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I never understood what it was. It doesn't bother me because I don't think, I don't know what it accomplished. Well, I noticed it was not unusual that we all voted on it and you always voted no. And I'm like, I don't even know what this is. So um, uh, we can keep it or lose it. I, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I just didn't, I didn't even understand what, it, what the purpose of it. I just feel like we're going to go through as many items as we can. I don't think we need to kind of vote on yes or no. Are we going to like review the, the agenda and go through these items? But I do think we need to, need to stick to an order of like completing items and going through it. But I don't think we need to vote on, I don't think that's something we should be voting on every yeah, I meeting. Think, I okay. think that's also something that we have been doing is yeah. really trying to push through the, through the agenda. Yeah, exactly. we've, been we've been doing well. Doing that. So, um, do we need it? Do we need an um, we need adoption step. of the agenda just to do that? Yeah, no. I don't think we need extra steps to kind of do what we're already here to do. You know, I, I, 
I hope that as we go by, you trust me to move the agenda forward and to make sure things don't languish and yep. say go languish. So things can languish with or without an adoption of an agenda. Exactly. Uh, so what, what was what did you want to talk about? Uh, Manny. Yeah, so initiative sponsorship. So I just think something we should add to the agenda, though, is one of our one of the trustees or the mayor kind of adds an item that needs to be reviewed on onto the agenda. So like just putting us our name next to it saying trustee, whoever, just so the public knows that you know we brought these items forward and we want to kind of discuss them during during our meetings. And and, and then you you kind of own it. I mean, and there's, yeah, a, there's been a couple of uh, uh, things that I brought stuff up early on, and then when it comes up, it was like, well, who brought this up? It was yeah. me. I, I can not you know, it was like, uh, at least I had to, you know, you have to keep track of it. You yeah, know? you have a track record okay, of, so like, you know. In, instead, in, in, well, we'll have the date and we'll have proposed by, you know, Trustee Lucas, Trustee uh, Rawlings or whoever. Trustee yeah. Young, just so that we help him remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I can remember. And then also what I had for breakfast because I forgot that. Too. All right, so could, could... at that end, um, Usually when we put things on the agenda, it's I think it's a really good discipline for us to have backup when we put something on the agenda. I think, you know. Well, yeah, I agree. I guess well, was, well, what did we, we talk about this week? Uh, um, uh, oh, about the uh, the firefighters. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know. Two weeks. Two weeks. So I, I brought it up. Nora brought it up. I mean, that should say, you know, young Lucas. I mean, so, so, the, so we, you know. We, we have the NICOM stuff. We have backup. I've sent that to yeah. you. And more than received their letter. Yes, Chris wrote it. Right? Yeah. yeah, yesterday, I think. Yeah. Friday, maybe. I think, it was, well, I think it was Friday. I don't remember seeing it. Okay, so, so okay. can we, we, we have a new uh, meeting procedures taking out the removing of adoption of agenda and putting in uh, initiative sponsorship under you know, each item. Right. The official Mrs. Roberts maintains the. Uh, Sally, have you, have you gotten all that? And got it, Mayor. Thank There's you, Sally. Also, it still says 7:30 for the regular meeting. It's the the work sessions changed to 5:15, but it still says 7:30. Okay, I think online it says eight, right? Yeah, online. but our <laughs> procedures say 7:30. It was we voted on it being eight. So. Mm -hmm. uh, or is any of this uh, uh, different or changed, or is this all the same? It's all the same. All right. Because I noticed something in there for public comment. That the um, the speakers must be must speak to the entire board and not to individuals on the board. That's correct, and that that's been violated a number of times. Say yes. that again. That speakers address the entire board. They yes. don't. They don't. Not they don't. Specific. They don't choose people on the board to yeah. to bark at. <laughs> to bark at. Yeah. <laughs> I've been, right. bar I've been barked at. The, 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 the last are item. Are on, let's just do the fireman's call. Wait, real are we quick. sticking to eight? It's my question. Are we sticking to eight or are we going to? Yeah, we're sticking to eight. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah. Seven thirty. We'll, we'll do a quick, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a fireman's carnival. This is just for the, the dates of the fireman's carnival. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, it's actually a little short this year, I think. Is it? Really? I didn't. Hey, they're shortening my beats of freedom. Yeah, they, uh, uh, I think they, they, they went too far with it and it was just too long. Too far. This is for your own protection. Yeah, about it. It's so organization <laughs> that involved. So it's eight, it's eight. I think that's actually normal. Isn't that normal? It's eight yeah. nights. Yeah. It's eight that's nights. That's normal. Uh, I think they decided yeah, but last themselves. year was like last 12 was or so. Yeah. Last year was, was longer. Feedback from the volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. Last year it was exhausting. I think it was too many. The best things last year. Oh, yeah. They run out of fuel if they. Okay, so everybody's so, fine. Wait up, wait up. Everybody's fine with having that on the agenda yes. for tonight. Yes. Well, yeah. uh, actually, for next week. Two yeah. Weeks. All right. Two Outstanding weeks. legislative items. Bob, you want to go through this? Sure. This, this is to uh, sort of my top ten list of things that have been out there over the years, last few years, that never got resolved, and that I think need to be resolved uh, for the board going uh, forward. You want me to go through each of them? Just briefly, yeah. Okay. So the first one is the. Uh, just, there's new people on the board. Yeah, still the fire code administration. Use the most. This is actually new uh, because the Department of State changed the regulations for code enforcement, which you have to have in your, in your code mm -hmm. with regard to enforcing the state building and fire code, and the local fire code. Uh, 
Um, but it's a needed change. The, the, the portions of the code, the code has not been over all the years. And this needs to be done. As I said earlier, this document is prepared. The building department is reviewing it. They need to make sure that, that the manager and the, uh, the building inspector uh, covers the things they need covered. There may be other things that, that are not in the standard code that they want covered. So we will we expect to have this for you at the next meeting. I thought that was really the highest priority. Uh, last year, or actually a couple of years ago, the board appointed an ad hoc ethics committee which proposed changes to the code of ethics of the village that never mm -hmm. got approved. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I think I, my view, the board should address that. Mm -hmm. um, I actually you know, worked on, take, I'm no. actually taking the uh, proposal that the ad hoc committee made, modified it, not substantively, but in order to put in the right form of the law. Uh, I think the process on that should be that um, I go back to the uh, ad hoc committee and the ethics board to talk through that further. If the board wants to entertain it at all, I won't do that if you don't want to entertain it. But well, they did a red line version of it. Yeah, and it, but we haven't. The board of trustees hasn't actually sort of addressed the changes. And right. so, I mean, Tom and I. Well, Lou, I, I'm not even. We've had it since before Lou was on the board, I believe. So, yeah, it's, so I, I think Tom, knocking around. I don't. Yeah. Know, so I think sure probably the board of trustees needs to go through it, maybe first, or maybe we all do it together. Mm -hmm. I think there are refinements that I made in terms of how they structure things mm -hmm. that would be better for me to work with them first, and that the fact you the draft that they're comfortable with, and that so, I think is is sufficient to draft. They've kind of disbanded. Do you need to work with them or the ethics mm -hmm. board? Let's go to the ethics board. Work with whoever. No, go to the ethics board. Okay. Because Carson is the head of the ethics. Yeah, the chair of that is now the chair of the ethics board. So. Okay. So if the board wants me to do that, I'll move yeah. some even that forward. Okay. Thank you. Uh, notice requirements. A couple of years ago, uh, I think not, not just I became aware, but the board became aware, and the, the land use boards have commented on the fact that there's a whole mishmash of procedures among the land use boards. Uh, which causes confusion for uh, people who are have applied for approval. It causes confusion for people who are concerned about approvals. Uh, I had proposed a um, uniform procedure. Uh, and I think I, I would suggest that the board consider that uh, after I do some homework with the land use boards about what they think is important. And my view, there should be a process. There are Lots of different approvals. There's one project, and then all the notice requirements should be key to the project identifying the proposals, uh, but not requiring multiple mailings and things like that. And I think we ought to uh, get into the 20th century, if not the 21st, by providing some sort of tracking system so people can find out what's going on with an application. I'm sure we can do that with new software. So uh, that's what I think you want to think about. You also drafted a local law before the pandemic about kind of harmonizing the notice provision. Right. So it was the right. same area, you know, like the same mail, same jurisdiction, same, you know, same circle for the zoning board that it right. was for so, the planning board, all that stuff. Right. So it was not, you know, not, you know you, were, the various provisions reports have different, without every application the radius mm -hmm. around the application or the property that's the subject of the application that you have to give notice to the property owner. And one is 200 feet, one is 400 feet. One was 100 feet. 100 feet, it didn't make any sense because all these laws were adopted at different times. So I think we ought to work on a process, a uniform process that ensures that uh, Folks who have applications, and I'm not talking about you know the Hampshire type application mm -hmm. people. Is most of the applications are homeowners who are trying yeah. to do something but need an approval, and this becomes very burdensome for them. Mm -hmm. And there are also a lot of people who are concerned about it, and they need to be properly notified. So I think we're going to work on that uh, proposal. Thank you. Um, wetlands protection in October of 2020. The HCZ City proposed revisions to the wetlands chapter of the code. I think the board should consider those. 
Um, the, the HCDMC and the other board may wish to tinker with them at this point. I don't know. I haven't looked at those lately. The HCCM has been modifying it, and we're waiting to hear back from them. Okay. So. I was aware of that. What is this again? Wetlands. Wetlands. But. What, what's broad strokes? What are, what are they looking to do? I'm not, we're, wait, we're waiting for a draft back from them. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know what they've been doing over the last couple of years. <laughs> well, what, what, what are they looking to do with the law? <laughs> you know? uh, they're, I, you know, I, okay. I don't, then, I don't know. Then let's just wait for them and just, this right. isn't a priority. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the HGZMC presented something to the village board. The village board asked for some additional work from the HGZMC. Uh, I think uh, it had been with the chair. They're supposed to come back in September of last year, but that came out this year. I can have to talk to the That's stormwater management. Stormwater management. Nanny. The, the stormwater management law is old. We worked on it with the village engineer years ago. Then the village engineer left. We didn't have a village engineer for a while. We didn't want to give it to the consultant. I think we ought to bring it up again, let the village engineer take a look at it, and bring it to the board. Okay. Rental registration. I don't know if you want to move forward with this. It was proposed by Trustee Natchez last year. Um, I had suggested, if you recall, that we look at a model from the town of Southampton that had been vetted through the courts, so we knew it would survive a mm -hmm. challenge. Uh, I don't know if you want to take another look at that or just leave it and, and well, it, it doesn't it. sound like a terrible idea. But, did, but what, didn't we determine that even if we adopt a rental registration law, we don't have access, can't get access to apartments? Wasn't that the issue? That's what the, this would help us. This you would know. help, but it's always an issue. There's a constitutional issue involved in uh, accessing the interior of apartments mm -hmm. of, of any principle, so it's a privacy issue. Mm -hmm. It would provide us permission to do so. So, sure, you think it's a good idea? or? Would this provide us permission? I lived this at my previous job, created it and lived it at my previous job and helped uh, eliminate serious, serious issues. Yeah, I think you would propose. Yeah. We have in the village, but why did we, we've decided, what was the decision? I mean, we look back at the minutes, but I think we, we. Yeah, a lot of things. Can we get this revived? So can we look at this? Mm -hmm. We can, we can revive it. Yeah, bring it back. Put it up. Okay. Yeah. Um, tree scholarships. Yeah, we're, we never heard back. That's we a whole year now, right? Yeah, we never heard back as to whether we asked the attorney general for opinion. Never heard anything. So my my uh, sure. one where I'd rather uh, apologize and ask permission yeah. if you want to do it. What are you going to do? Us? Right. <laughs> put us in tree scholarship jail. Yeah. I think we should move forward. I mean, it's an opportunity to give some tree canopy to, to areas of this community that are, are very difficult to plant trees. Yeah, yeah. So right. it comes into play in the fact that there is a requirement in our, in our, in our code um, that when I do approve the removal of a tree, that the property owner has to plant trees. And mm -hmm. in some cases in this village, as everyone knows, there are properties that probably are not very conducive to that. So this could help us in that regard significantly. Yeah. You said if a property owner removes a tree, if a uh, if a tree is removed from a um a um a, a a person's property, they have to then replace it. Yeah, it's in the code. Okay. Yeah. I thought you so said if we if we, if we had if we had to remove it. Well, no, we plant plenty of trees when we remove trees, but they have to replant the tree. So if they remove a tree over eight inches uh, in in uh, um, in diameter, mm -hmm. they have to replant a tree of two inches or two and a half inches mm -hmm. in diameter uh, if they receive permission to remove that tree from me. So but you're saying know. use that if, if they're saying I don't want to put this back in my property. I can't. I can't. Not it's not I, I can't. Okay. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't respond to the. I don't want to, but I can't. And sometimes it's justified. And then you could say, all right, then plant the tree on uh, the tree scholarship. Then I have something. I have the tree scholarship as a tool. To get an additional tree okay. for the village planted somewhere else. Right? Oh. Tree scholarships, the idea was that the village would spend the money to put some more trees in the allowed yeah. mm -hmm. to place trees in places that are. Well, we can have a, well yeah, we, we can have a small budget item. Right. Places that we, well, in places that we can't plant. Right. Trees. Just mentioning the trees are a good thing for the village mm -hmm. overall. Yeah. So let's move forward on. Okay. 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 
food service establishment. This this was just at the risk of raising a painful discussion. This went, 29. This went on for, for months, years. To no, years. To no uh, avail. No res resolution. And this, frankly, is a problem in the code for the building department. Mm -hmm. the, and for the zoning board. And for the zoning board, because the definition don't fit today's world of food service establishments. Mm -hmm. And there are provisions like the, the no, two, uh, no two food service establishments within 200 feet of each other on the Eric Avenue that just are not. No, no, no. They're fine when you walk 200 feet, and they're not fine to food service establishments on the mm -hmm. Eric Avenue. Well, it would be all into stores if it wasn't food service establishment. Yeah. So uh, I, I think at, at the risk of more pain, you need to get back to business. Maybe it would be better now that we've taken a break. <laughs> Maybe there'll be clarity and Maybe a change in uh, staff here. Uh, it, it, you originally had a proposal that was kind of clean. If you could work that out and bring it back, yes, I can, I can do that. And then, yeah, we got into a whole series of other issues. Uh, like, we got into you know, down through and things like that. Yeah, and couldn't get past that casual, thing. and it, it right. just went on forever. And it's simple. I, my view, this is obviously your fault, but simple is the way to go because what happens is that the law never catches up with the reality of marketing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and what the board has to do is really, I think, look at what are the characteristics that matter in terms of planning and zoning, like parking and those kinds of things and making these decisions. That makes but, sense. I, I also think that while we're thinking about this, that something that we haven't addressed with this that would resolve some of the marketing issues is thinking about how our sign ordinance impacts food food service establishments. So sometimes it's the graphics that are a problem, and some communities are better at um, creating chaotic signage, meaning like the signage that says, like no loud noise, no, and all of that that just came out of nowhere like ten years ago. Oh, what are you trying to like bright, bright light signage? Well, just yeah, that yeah. you can that there, there. Are, you know, if you, you, you can, you can make sure that some somebody that has a you know clear logo, yeah, has to maybe tamp it down a little bit, and that mm -hmm. may address some of the, some of the concerns yeah. that worked around this food service establishment. I just made it easier, right? right. To have the well, signs. Just, just remember that uh, sign ordinances, municipal sign ordinances, are brought to the First Amendment problem. So it's not that we can't do it. We can. There's lots of models out there, mm -hmm. but they are not easy because a lot of things that people intuitively want to do, that legislators intuitively want to do, mm -hmm. are not going to satisfy First Amendment concerns. So it's a lot of work. That's how that's how gigantic American flags appeared over every car dealership in America. <laughs> exactly. The basic okay. principle is you can't distinguish uh, con no content based really? discrimination. Right. It's, but I'm talking about graphics, not content. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, they just have to be consistent. Because mm -hmm. what you want, you can't stop it. I'm placing that on the flag. The regs have seen coming in. You can't. Yep. Uh, the mayor has brought up uh, yes. limitations on attorney's fees for representing village officials in investigations. Just so, as it stands right now, uh, if someone has to go before the ethics board or something like that, they hire their own attorney, and there's absolutely no control by the village over what that attorney charges or what it costs. They can hire a thousand dollar attorney an hour, mm -hmm. and there's nothing we can do about it. All I want, all I wanted to do was have you know some some common sense controls, you know, and, and I, I think if you if you talk to the controller and said you know I'm paying this bill and I have absolutely no control over it and I have absolutely no uh, say in how much this person charges and I can't stop it and it's you know they're going to say well, you out of your mind how did you how did you let that happen? So you know, I, I would like to see that you know if. if uh, a person has to hire an attorney to represent themselves because of the either their actions or you know what what what, what I, is, I think you look at it as kind of like a, a public defender. In other words, uh, uh, you provide a, a public defender to a criminal defendant, 
probably, you know, but if you've got more money, you, you, you bring in the big guns. I think uh, you, you we come up and you said, well, you know, we'll give you this much for an attorney. If you need more attorney, go get it yourself. That That's what I wanted. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the the baseline I was using was what the village attorney charges uh, the village for litigation. Well, uh, it's for those people who can't really afford it. And so they know that you can, but you, they can't. We, we, we paid one hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. I get what I get your point. Yeah. I totally get your for point. One but person, I'm just saying in regards to, I, I would bet if you looked at the people on death row in this country, nobody had one hundred and forty seven thousand dollars worth of lawyer. I mean, uh, there's got to be there's got to be a limit. I mean, you could you could bring in you could fly in, uh, you know, like Clarence Darrow. Yeah, you could, like, you yeah, so take yeah. him up and fly him in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, who are the famous lawyers now? I don't know. I don't know. The, the Johnny Cochran. I too. really was going to say that. Yeah, he's he's gone. <laughs> who's the guy? No, who's the guy that that that, that, that did Gore v. Wade? Who lives in Connecticut? Boys. What? Yeah, David Boyce. David Boyce. Yeah, not him. Right. Right. We got there. Yeah, hey, David Boyce is. Most admired Roy Cohen in the past. I've only hired Roy Cohen. Yeah, Cone yeah. Bring David Boyce. So I, I'd like to look at this again. Have a, a law proposed that you know has a reasonable limit, so that people can have a defense, but they 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 can't you know hold the village you know uh, to this uh, you know massive bill. And you know, yeah, okay. I mean, that seems reasonable. I mean, does anybody disagree? Mm -hmm. yeah, the last one on my list is the Maker Zone, which the board considered years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the what zone? Maker, Maker zone. zone. It's pretty industrial area. Industrial area. Oh, so rezoning of the industrial area. I don't know if you want to look at that again. I don't know if the industrial area committee need a meeting these days. They're not meeting, but the industrial area is pushing along with their own. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's yeah, the, trying to do something. So. It's probably better. We probably should resurrect the industrial area. We should. We should. We should at least send it to everybody so we can all look at it. They've invited us to uh, attend a uh, a meeting of theirs, which is what. Uh, remember you, you? Did you want to ask? Uh... Oh, you know, this is a this is a question. So we, the board of trustees, was asked to attend. Um, I don't know, even remember what the group is. It's 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 a group of property owners in the industrial area to come to a meeting. And I said, if there's three of us there, it probably has to be noticed as a public meeting, <laughs> and that we should check with you. I mean, we would. I don't know that we are going to be making any determinations, but we were being asked to come as a board. Well, I, I, I mean, I'll tell you the the the, the genesis of it was we. Um, Mike contacted me. He said, "I've already heard from Lonnie." I said, "Why don't you invite everybody, include uh, uh, Nora and Tom?" Right. So that was that was my discussion. And but, I, I mean, if there's more than two of us, there's a quorum, and it's we're being asked to meet as a come as a board. So. Right. I think we're, we're giving it. A, They're happy to notice it as a yeah, public yeah, meeting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the only, the only caveat is you were to sit there, mute, and not say a word, mm -hmm. and just listen. Maybe you don't have to notice it as a public meeting because I think the statute says if you discuss public business, mm -hmm. I, 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 I would not bet on this board's muteness. Yeah. Right. I, exactly. That's what I, I don't even that. think that's <laughs> what they even want. They want <laughs> opinions. They want it's something like a a committee, like one of our. Flood committees. They want like a representative yeah. from. I think the we're board. better off noticing it. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, in terms of priority, do you want a prioritize this list? Do you want me to get you? There's certain some of the stuff already in the can. I can give, give us what's in the can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just sort of as quick as I can get it out to you. Yeah. Consistent with the other things you want to do, I can. Uh, I'll do that. Was it they, just? The wetlands law and HCMC, what, what, didn't this have to do with them taking the permitting authority from the planning board and giving mm -hmm. it to themselves? That's that's one aspect of it, but there are lots of other changes that. Uh, right. I don't think the planning board was keen on that. Yes. There are lots of other changes. So this is our our local wetlands law? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's called the freshwater wetlands law, but it doesn't just apply to freshwater wetlands. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one change. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did that happen? No idea. All right. Uh, let's make a motion going to executive session. So moved. Second. Oh, wait, I got to say what it's for. Hold on a second. And proposed and litigation is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session to pursuant to 105 1D of the New York State Public Offices Law to discuss matters of pending litigation. Do we need to name the litigation? No. 
I'll make the motion. Second. Call roll, Og. Trustee Rawlings? Yes. Trustee Yeiser Reed? Yes. Trustee Young? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, before we go into executive session, I need a motion to end the work session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's adjourn to the room next door. So, LMC. LMC, did you eat? There's a pizza here. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not going to hit that. All right. I'll meet you guys in there in two minutes. Five minutes. Take it. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know, Tick.
Good evening, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, Mike, I can hear you. Great. I hope I'm not interrupting, but I, I'm here and ready when you are. Thank you. Mayor, we cannot hear you on Zoom. Can you hear me now? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank God you won that election. <laughs> We've listened to that all night. <laughs> and uh, the chief is going to begin the ceremony, and, and I'm going to do the swearing in. So, chief? Okay, good evening. I'm going to introduce you to John Paul. So, John Paul is 24 years old and grew up in the village of Bermuda. He graduated from Rhinek High School and attended St. Thomas Aquinas College, where he obtained a degree in criminal justice. Since he was young, John wanted to be involved in emergency services to help him protect the community that he grew up in. Throughout his life, John has been surrounded by family and friends who are involved in various aspects of emergency services, including John Paul's father, who served as a village of American fire chief. For the last two years, John enjoyed working behind the scenes at the police department, which afforded him a whole new perspective on what a police officer does. He is currently a recruit at the Western County Police Academy and is expected to graduate this May. When I first met John, I think he was about three or four years old, and he was driving around with his father, who was then at the time a fire chief. So he comes from a long history of service in this community. Uh, your grandfather was a volunteer. Both your grandfather oh, yeah. were, were volunteers. Uh, your, your, your grandfather uh, served in the American Legion and served this country in uh, the Army. And uh, I just want to say what a pleasure it is to do this tonight. So, repeat it. I, I, John Ball, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I'll support the Constitution of the United States. I'll support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of New York, and the Federal Constitution of the United States of New York, and the regulations of the Village of America, and regulations of the Village of America, that I will faithfully discharge the duties of a police officer, and I will faithfully discharge the duties of a police officer to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. Congratulations, son. Come on, Mom. You look great. You look great. Let me get my chief. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great, John will send it to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. Yes. 
Thank you to the men in blue who came out here tonight to support oh, their- uh, Appreciation Day. I did, I would, gentlemen, this is Police Appreciation Day. Yes, it is. And we just want to tell you how much we appreciate you. God bless, work safe out there. All right. All right. Uh, certificates of appreciation for outgoing board and committee members. All righty. If you're here, as I as I read your name off, uh, please. Uh, I'm going to go up there. Uh, yeah. First name is Andrew Wolowitz. I think Mr. Wolowitz is here with us today. Mr. Alan Barnett. Barnett is not with us today. Uh, Mr. Barnett, uh, Mr. Wolowitz uh, served on the Board of Architecture Review. Mr. Barnett served on the Board of uh, Ethics. Yoram Miller served on the Board of Ethics. Andreas uh, Garcia served on traffic here. Uh, Brian Williams served on traffic. Williams not here. Uh, Ellen Silver uh, was chair of the committee for the environment. Well learned to pull there. Uh, Matthew Tollefson was on the treaty committee. Tollefson's not here. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I skipped uh, Gary uh, Kligman was on traffic. Uh, Jane Dorian. I'm here. I know you all. It was like <laughs> Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. It was a joy and a, a wonderful experience. I served two terms. You did. You did. And you that I was so happy that I was a member, and I now will be a volunteer. A graduate. <laughs> you can get reappointed in a few. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. But, but, she has to stop. Yes, I was literally a poem. <laughs> oh, it, you, 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 you did the uh, poetry live. Yes. After, uh, Jane Dury, Peggy Jackson. It's Jackson's not here tonight. You sent to her. Uh, Dana Gallagher. It's Gallagher is not here tonight. Uh, Kathy Savolt, former mayor Kathy Savolt. Kathy. Work. Manny Rawlings, <laughs> Park and Rec. Come on here, big guy. <laughs> Congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you. You're working on Park and Rec. Heather Castellani uh, Milbor. Is that the guy here tonight? Uh, Gail Kohler. Gail is not here tonight. Uh, Meg Jurgen, uh, Meg's not here tonight. Uh, Ellen Axelrod from the Street Committee, not here tonight. Ellen Styler from Planning, uh, not here this evening. And uh, Carrie Baccaro Nelkin from Arts, not here tonight. And uh, Jamie Feinstein from uh, Rex and Park is not here tonight. And we will make sure that uh, these all go out in the mail to these folks. We thank you all for their service. Thank you all very much. Find his. I thought, I thought they were all in order. Okay. okay. <laughs> Check, do me a favor, check your uh, check yours and make sure your name is in there. It's the right name. Check your uh, I thought they were all in order and the name might not be right. The same to me, yeah. You may have got someone else's. Oh, no, I did get mine. Did you get yours? Kathy, did you get yours? Oh, oh, is Cindy Pasolino on it? 
apologize. Okay. <laughs> that means I'm still on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, see, Ms. Faslin, I don't see your name on the list. I'm sure we will get you one, but thank you for your service. I'm very sorry. I'm sure uh, Sally is listening right now and making a note to herself to get that out. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the presentation of the stretch code. What? Adoption of duties. Uh, no. Uh, presentation of the stretch code. Uh, Mr. DeWine. Hi, Mr. DeWine. How are you? Uh, you're, up, you're up now, sir. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you all. Uh, and I believe Chris Groy is with us. I'm not seeing him on the. Yes, he uh, is. Yes, there he is. Yep, I'm here. Okay. So again, pleasure to be with you all and uh, talking about the New York Stretch Energy Code that you folks are considering for adoption. Um, Mike DeWine here. I am a contractor for NYSERDA that serves as the uh, energy Stretch Energy Code circuit rider for a whole bunch of the Eastern New York State and been at it for quite some time and involved in uh, most of the communities that have adopted in uh, Westchester County, uh, as well as a number of others in that region. Uh, so what is the New York Stretch Energy Code? Uh, it is uh, an adoptable energy code made uh, possible by Article 11 of the New York State Energy Law, been around since uh, the New York State Energy Code has been around since 1979. Uh, <clears throat> it increases the, the efficiency of the state energy code. It's based on, you know, off the shelf, uh, run of the shelf uh, technologies, systems, and research, nothing rocket science. And uh, it's had a great deal of review uh, towards uh, solving our and uh, improving our building energy efficiency uh, in the state, across the state. Uh, you can see here uh, the relationship of the New York stretch code as compared to the 2021 International Energy Code. Uh, the stretch code is built upon the uh, New York State Energy Code, which is also built upon and used as its base <clears throat> the nationally developed uh, codes, energy codes by the ICC or International Code Council. And you can see that there is um, an improvement using the New York stretch code uh, currently to the business as usual codes. In actuality, this, this scenario has changed a little bit. Uh, New York State will be adopting as its Next energy code, the 2024 IECC, which isn't quite finished yet, but will be later this year. Uh, and it is much more stringent than the 2021. Uh, so again, uh, as part of the effort promoted by New York State, the climate action uh, law and NYSERDA and other state agencies. And by the way, feel free to uh, raise your hands or otherwise interrupt me to throw out the anchor and answer any questions you may have along the way, or we can wait to the end, your call. Uh, it impro improves the energy efficiency over the state energy code by about 7% for commercial buildings and about 20% for residential. It's proven to be cost effective. It's been put through a significant cost benefit analysis by NYSERDA, uh, and most of its provisions have paybacks of around or less than 10 years, simple payback, and provides greater greenhouse gas reductions, plus significant uh, benefits all the way around for uh, people in buildings and homes and what have you. 
and helps ensure a ver verifiable minimum uh, energy performance of our buildings, which consume about 40% of our energy nationally. Uh, significant non-energy benefits, as I mentioned, the long-term benefits uh, include, of course, lower energy use, which means lower operating costs, which uh, saves significant uh, money for building tenants and owners. And lots of community benefits as well by, uh, uh, you know, helping engage the professions which are being developed consistently now by numbers of organizations and agencies for uh, workforce development uh, for professions involved in higher performance building design and construction and in the ver verification of those performance requirements. <coughs> it also improves the attractiveness of communities, you know, where codes are better, where performance is better, where uh, you know, communities have adopted green and energy efficient building programs. Uh, those uh, those uh, requirements and those communities are highly desired. And it creates more resilient buildings and communities as well as helps provide healthier and in indoor environments, which of course is of major consideration given the recent uh, epidemic pandemic. And then finally, uh, especially at the bottom line, it helps provide greater comfort and resident or occupant uh, satisfaction. There are a number of compliance paths, both in the residential and commercial uh, portions of the requirements. There's a prescriptive path and that often uses a free software that uh, no doubt your energy or your building code office currently uses it's a free software. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and um, that ResCheck software is also designed and has a version to support New York Stretch, a free software that designers, builders, code officials, et cetera, uh, developers can, can use and access. Uh, there's a performance path, which uh, creates uh, by a different path and often accommodates uh, many of the uh, the kind of beyond code uh, design approaches that designers and builders use to take advantage of their preferences for building and for consumers' preferences as well uh, to comply. And then there's a passive house path uh, that's also available to be used uh, for compliance. Passive House is a kind of advanced uh, building program, kind of like Energy Star used to be, uh, was promoted heavily in New York State. And there still are Energy Star programs, but Passive House is one that has gained a great deal of acceptance and interest uh, everywhere on the uh, I-80-95 I uh, coordinate, uh, but also um, in the greater New York area. And then there's the ERI path, which is a, another performance type path that enables the use of the PERS ResNet uh, rating system, another, another home program that is utilized in uh, the Hudson Valley and uh, uh, Westchester County. As I mentioned, there are a lot of different ways uh, compliance can be demonstrated. Those free Department of Energy software packages, which um, are accessible online to anyone, uh, ComCheck Web and ResCheck Web also support the, uh, the New York Stretch Co compliance. Again, it's um, it is one that is used by most uh, building uh, codes jurisdictions. That third party HERS rating utilizes the energy rating index and then passive house uh, uh, compliance certifiers as well uh, use it. And of course, ComCheck and ResCheck uh, are used by uh, 
no doubt used by your code officials currently. Uh, there are some conflicting provisions between the New York State uh, baseline codes, the state uniform code, and the New York stretch. And I'll ask Chris, we've been working with this quite often, to uh, talk about that briefly and talk about how that would impact you uh, when adopting the New York stretch code. Chris? Yep, thanks, Mike. Um, just as a bit of background about myself, so uh, I'm a senior project manager at NYSERDA. Um, uh, I'm on NYSERDA's um, uh, codes and product standards team. And among my areas of responsibility over the past two years or so has been uh, supporting outreach on New York Stretch 2020, supporting municipalities like yours um, in considering uh, adoption of New York Stretch and um, supporting the use of our adoption resources um, for New York Stretch 2020. Um, and mainly I'm here tonight, you know, typically Mike gives these um, presentations to boards like yourself. Um, I'm here basically to go over a couple, a couple of fairly recent developments with New York Stretch 2020. So as Mike mentioned, this was developed, this is New York State's first stretch code. Um, it was developed as an overlay, as basically an additional set of requirements to the state energy code. That's how it's intended to be adopted. Um, and NYSERDA has been working with Department of State um, to basically understand um, some conflicting requirements, basically requirements in New York stretch that uh, conflict with state uniform code requirements. Um, I, I'm going to assume there's like a diverse set of backgrounds in the audience, but basically in New York state, um, you have executive law, which defines the parameters of the uniform code and the uniform code basically includes all building requirements outside of energy. Um, at a high level. So mechanical code requirements, plumbing code, structural, et cetera, et cetera. The state energy law, um, the, the state energy law is what's behind the energy code. Um, so there's two separate laws and two separate code areas. And basically where a local energy code, you know, in this case, if a municipality were to adopt um, stretch energy code it would it would and, and have a local energy code more restrictive than the state energy code where there where that local law where that local code um, or requirement within that code conflicts in some way with a state uniform code requirement um, basically the, the municipality is obligated to do one of two things they either have to file a notice and petition with the state code council to get approval for that local requirement that conflicts with the uniform code. Um, or they, um, they basically you know, sever the requirement or not include the requirement um, in, in, in the case of New York stretch. So, um, you know, we've been, like I said, we've been working extensively with the Department of State on this. Um, we, have, uh, we have identified a handful of requirements in New York stretch that conflict with the uniform code, um, which are listed here. And basically at this point, for municipalities that are considering adoption of New York stretch 2020, we are not recommending that they uh, include these requirements in their adopting law. Um, and our, uh, and Mike will talk uh, a bit about this later in the presentation, but among our resources, our adoption resources, is a, a guide, an adoption guide, which um, we, promote, we, we promote with all municipalities considering adoption. That guide includes a model local law, which we recommend municipalities that adopt New York Stretch use. Um, and within that model local law, uh, there are specific places where uh, were specific requirements in New York stretch to be excluded from local adoption. Um, there are places within that model local law to um, make those accommodations. And so basically we are recommending that were you to adopt New York stretch, you 
just not include these requirements at this point. Um, depending on you know where you go from here, if you um, take you know if if you take this further and um, draft local legislation, um, you know Mike and I are available to support those efforts you know to ensure that you know any questions you might have about the specific requirements um, are answered and um, and support your use in drafting that legislation, the use of that model local law in, in a drafting legislation. Um, at a high level, um, you know, the, I'm not going to go into any great detail on the individual provisions identified here, but I am, like I said, available, um, you know, by call or email um, at any time to go over any of these in depth. Um, but the bottom line is there are uh, basically a handful of, I guess, categories of issues here. Um, you have, we have commercial EV, or electric vehicle charging capability and um, solar readiness requirements for commercial and residential buildings. Um, at a high level, these are accommodations for conduit and panel space in new buildings. Um, should down the line a building owner want to install EV charging or um, you know uh, photovoltaics, they they would already have basically the infrastructure to do so. Um, so these are readiness measures. They don't have an energy impact um, up front. They have a long-term cost saving, you know, for future accommodation. Um, the um, the balance of these requirements have a potential uh, a potential energy impact, um, uh, a fairly minor energy impact, um, but the net result of a municipality adopting New York Stretch without these requirements is still a code that is um, you know close to 10% on average. This is combined residential and commercial construction, uh, more efficient than the state energy code. So the bottom line is the code the code without these requirements is still um, is still more efficient and is still cost effective. Um, but we want to make sure that uh, municipalities considering adoption understand that there are these conflicts, and we are not recommending um, a municipality adopt with them. So the last thing I'll say is we're in the process now of um, updating New York Stretch. Um, we, will, we will publish a new version of this document on our website without these requirements. Um, we're in the process of finalizing, finalizing those revisions now. Um, we'll also be publishing updates to all of our toolkit documents, again, to address these um, to, adapt, to address these conflicts. And uh, for municipalities that have already um, adopted New York Stretch, in some cases we're already working with some municipalities, um, but we'll also be um, issuing a communication to those municipalities to um, walk them through next steps. So that's basically, um, that's the long and short of it. I understand this is a bit heady and there's a lot here to digest. Um, so again, I believe my contact information is at the end of this presentation, and I would encourage anyone with questions to feel free to reach out. Thank you. Okay, any questions right at the moment? We'll keep rolling. Keep rolling. Okay, so um, some of the differences uh, Chris touched on, but uh, uh, between the, the state-based energy code and the New York stretch include efficiency amendments to, uh, you know, building insulation requirements, a little bit better windows. Actually, we've seen that uh, the windows that are required by the New York stretch are actually the, uh, the windows that are most often <coughs> called for in, uh, in that region. Uh, more efficient lighting, hot water supply requirements, duct system. Uh, one of the options is to use uh, a better energy rating index. Uh, the lower, the better. 
uh, the, the current code requires the use of, or the compliance with the 62 energy rating in, index. You can go to our uh, ERI of 50. Those passive house compliance requirements uh, that uh, are an option as well, especially in, in Westchester where passive house is quite popular. And you can see all of the uh, piece by piece comparison of the most salient uh, requirements in this overlay document. I'll show this again. Uh, again, the nice CERTA resource site. On the commercial side, as well, improvements in, uh, but very small improvements in windows, walls, slabs, slab edge insulation, et cetera. You know, we had some concern early on about uh, uh, replacement uh, uh, products in renovations and stuff. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. Um, there is a requirement for uh, larger buildings between 20,000, 50,000 square feet to test the air leakage, just like you test the homes right now for the energy code. And then some refinements, uh, small tweaks in the uh, requirements for um, lighting, water heating, and duct sizing and design. So again, uh, there's some energy monitoring requirement differences, uh, commissioning for air leakage, for air barrier installations in commercial buildings that don't exist, at least at the moment, in the base energy, statewide energy code, elevator performance and commercial equipment, uh, kitchen equipment, uh, which is coming on uh, pretty strong now. Um, for existing buildings, the stretch code works just like our current energy code. Uh, the only thing that has to be made to comply in renovation work is uh, the new work. And that's very, very key. Uh, the stuff that you're replacing or um, uh, rebuilding, uh, for example, if you're putting a, a if you're adding roof or attic insulation, you just would have to bring it to uh, the stretch energy code, which uh, those increase in requirements are very small compared to what you would have to do anyway if you were renovating to the existing statewide energy code. Um, there are a couple differences. The commissioning thing, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, not really much of anything in the residential side that's actually different, just small increases in, in the insulation or the window value. So here's a breakdown of the cost and savings impact uh, first table, and we're, we're looking at uh, the climate zone uh, that the energy codes are set up in in your climate zone for a outside of New York City, uh, cost savings on average by this climate zone are about 300 and some odd dollars a year with a total incremental cost of uh, just under $3,000 and a simple payback of 8.9 years. For multifamily, uh, a little bit lower total energy costs, but also lower total incremental cost and a payback of just under 10 years. Um, the life cycle cost savings uh, are uh, about uh, over a 30 year life cycle, about $2,000 and uh, around for single family that is, and just under 800 for single family for multifamily. And then um, the weighted average uh, with the uh, more restrictive ventilation requirements, which actually aren't, well, they're only if you uh, cho choose to keep them in and not sever them, uh, savings of about $2,800 for single family and about $1,600 for multifamily. On the commercial side, in climate zone four, um, which is about 71% of the construction type, 
cost savings about 5%, five percent, five and a half percent. Cost about 85 cents a square foot and a simple payback of about 11 years. So who's adopting? Well, you know, the, most of the action, action is in communities in the Hudson Valley and in Westchester County. You can see uh, most notably city of New Rochelle. I, I worked with quite a bit, uh, North Salem, Ossini. Uh, Bedford has had the New York stretch code longer than anyone else. Uh, Cortland, Dobbs Ferry, et cetera. So a lot of folks in your area having adopted uh, nearby. The buildings that meet or exceed uh, uh, New York stretch code are <clears throat> happening oftentimes despite the uh, stretch code. Again, Passive House is a popular uh, home design or building design program. Uh, this particular uh, example in Canandaigua, New York, which is act actually one step colder uh, climate zone for design usually requires higher uh, energy code requirements anyway, uh, is an example of one multifamily um, affordable housing complex in the city of Hudson, just up the river. Um, and there's a reuse of existing buildings, a big renovation project where um, that building set of buildings, which include multifamily and commercial building, mixed use, which is really quite common nowadays, especially in redeveloping downtowns and, and uh, denser uh, living areas um, is an example. And then uh, the zero place uh, development in New Paltz, uh, which uses a bunch of, uh, of different higher efficiency uh, elements to, uh, to develop that property and uh, is uh, also uh, compliant with uh, New York stretch code. So as Chris mentioned before, there are quite a few resources available. That adoption guide with the model, or the model uh, local law is available in that uh, adoption guide. <coughs> Uh, also, that comparison of, of the differences between the statewide code and the stretch code. There's training and technical support, uh, live training, online training, and uh, a hotline and technical support for any questions that the jurisdiction may have, as well as code enforcement tools and checklists. There are those um, New York specific res check and com check. Uh, compliance tools, as well as a hotline. And then there's me uh, and the other New York stretch circuit riders. Uh, from this point on, my time is your time. And if you have questions, if your code enforcement folks have uh, questions or need some more hands-on assistance, uh, we can help you out there. And as Chris mentioned, when it comes to the, the fine points of adoption, uh, he's supportive on the, the interface with your file or interface with your filing with Department of State. So here's our contact information. Um, myself and Matt Evans available for technical support as well as Chris, particularly on the uh, on the bigger picture and the uh, interface with Department of State and your filing. Do you have any questions right now? You might ask. Uh, I, I just think that uh, we're, we're going to have to have our village manager run this by our building department to get their input on it too, but I, I really do appreciate the thoroughness of your presentation. Sure, and I, again, I'd be very much available to talk with your codes folks. Uh, it's really important that they understand this, how it impacts them, um, and I'm more than happy to get on a Zoom call or just a call uh, and, and talk to them about it, connect them with a couple of the local code enforcement uh, folks. I would suggest uh, the folks in Bedford and, and perhaps New Rochelle. And, um, you know, again, my time is your time. Don't hesitate to pick.
pick up the phone and call if you miss me. I'm glad to get right back to you. And, and again, glad to support in any way I can. Thank you, sir. And any questions from the board? No. I uh, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. And I'm sure staff will be getting in touch with you. Very good. Have a good evening. Right. You thank folks you. Have a wonderful evening. You too, sir. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Appreciate the time. Okay. Okay. There'll be a quiz on all that. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do, since there, there's a lot of folks I'm sure that want to talk to the dog park uh, application, and I'm sure they have babysitters and stuff. So I'm going to jump on down to, pardon me, I'm going to jump down to old business uh, 3A. Adoption of resolutions for the village dog park. And I just want to give a little what I believe is where we are. You know, the village uh, has been searching for a place to put a viable dog park, uh, which predates my time uh, up on this board, which happened in 2001. Uh, somebody sent an email today saying that uh, they heard about this in 1964. Uh, I didn't even live here then, but I was alive. Uh, so this has been something that's been rolling around for a long time. Uh, there was a spot picked next to the sewage treatment plant, and uh, it originally had the approval of the, the, the door park committee. Uh, and then COVID hit, and things got a little bit uh, pushed back. And uh, then the... Uh, Ad hoc dog park committee asked for more time to evaluate uh, other sites in the community. And we gave them three months and the three months was up uh, January 4th. Uh, in that time, uh, they, you know, they did not come up with a more suitable location uh, for the dog park. Now bear in mind that in October, we were, we were at the cusp of pulling the trigger on this. And it was going to be a, uh, presented the next step to the uh, Harbor Coast Zone Management Commission. Uh, but we delayed because they thought that they could find a better venue. And uh, you know, I, I, I really appreciate their hard work because I've been thinking about this for 20 years. And uh, I, I know every piece of land the village has. And uh, I don't think there is a better venue, both for parking, the availability of electricity, the available, availability of water, and the size, uh, you know, to, to make it a viable dog park, you have to have at least an acre. And uh, that's a very, very hard uh, bill to fit in this community where we have very little land and very little availability of land. Uh, and, you know, we, we need to have a place that's also accessible to the people of this community. So that's how that's, this was chosen. And I know that it isn't a perfect spot, and, but I also know that there isn't a perfect spot. And uh, we have looked high and low. And really the question now before us is whether we have a dope park or not. And you know, that's you know, an open question to hopefully be solved here. But uh, if folks wanna speak on this subject, the mic is open, just let me caution you uh, that it's a three minute time limit. And we have to uh, enforce the time limits uh, pretty stringently uh, in this community uh, because there are folks that uh, try to uh, break that all the time. Uh, so when you get up, if you, if you wouldn't mind uh, saying your name and your address, please. My name is Elizabeth Young. My address is 915. I'm here to just respond to some misinformation, misunderstanding, misinformation. Say say where you're from, just so it's all. Out there. She just no, did. no, no. But she's an ad hoc dog park committee member. Oh, just, 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 just. She's. I, if, if I was, I was on the previous dog park subcommittee. I am now on the ad hoc. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're speaking for yourself. And I'm speaking for myself as a private citizen. Right. Yes. That's right. Um, I wanted to address some of the concerns that were raised on social media. So I want to just assure everyone that people have looked at those issues before both in the subcommittee that was created three years back, as well as in the current committee, um, you know, to assure you that we had uh, considered issues such as traffic and children, 
Um, these are not going to be apparent in the social media posts, but there will be no entry point that will be accessible to the children or the traffic. Um, there's only one point of entry, and that is from the car park. Um, um, if I mean, looked at a number of different sites, um, and to be honest, some of the sites didn't really belong to us. They weren't really ours to conserve. Um, so this is, this is a really important point. And finally, that um, you know, the, this is a year-round amenity. This would be something that would be available to you residents four seasons a year, full day. Um, and it would be, I think, a nice companion to the amenities that we already have in the village. We already have dogs during matches and practices. So it's far safer to have them um, in a dog park uh, where they really couldn't get out. There would be no entry point from the fields. Um, so it's far safer to have them in the dog park than, rather than to have them on the fields on fence. So let's want to ensure that all these things have been considered. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, my name is Nicole Bechdahl. I live at 1122 Pomeroy Avenue. Um, my, well, one, I want to thank you guys and uh, the committee. I know that it has been years and they've looked at many different sites. Um, I am a dog owner, I'm a dog lover, 100%. Um, but I also have children that have used the field at Harbor Island for many, many years. Um, and I can 100% say being at Harbor Island in the fall and in the spring from three o'clock to seven o'clock, because my kids go at different times, <laughs> it is packed. And the place where the dog park is going to be is 100% used for field space. So I just want to be really, really clear that if we put a dog park there, I understand maybe that is the best option of the options, but we are 100% taking away field space from our kids, from a lot, a lot, a lot of kids. Many from the village of Mamarina, also from the surrounding towns, um, that we are taking away that field space and giving it to the dog park. So I just, that is 100% what's gonna happen. I would love a dog park. I honestly think if that's the best solution, then maybe there isn't space in the village for a dog park. Um, I think we're, you know, we're blessed with rye nearby. The rye beach is amazing in the winter. Four acres is in New Rochelle. Um, I just think for me, the bottom line is why are we taking away field space from the kids for this? If it was empty space, that's one thing, but to take it away from the kids just seems wrong. I, I just want to point out that you know, I, while that people might practice on that space, there there are no scheduled games on that space. I understand, but the practices are I, Monday through I, Friday. I understand. I understand. Hours. I just want to. I understand, but I, I think there's games are actually the smallest piece of, of the field use. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is excuse me. My name is Ann Good. I live at 19 Jason Lane in the Marina. Um, I also am opposed to taking the field space away and giving it to um, the dog park. One area, um, you go into the dog park dossier that you put online. Um, there was a letter from Dan Margosius, who was representing LMFC, um, was a former budget chair, I think, here. Um, and he was giving his opinions, which is that, you know, this is the most expedient option. This is something that can get done. And that's why we're making a bad choice, because we can get it done and towards a good goal. Um, but that with the reseeding and the re improvements to the Harbor Island soccer field starting at Croce, that we're going to have to take one field offline every year to improve that. And the area that's targeted as the dog park is going to be a prime field. As if we change that, continue with the plans to upgrade the soccer fields, there is no off use site. So you're down one team. The kids that get hurt the most in this in LMFC and the, uh, the Maronic Rec program are the Village of the Maronic kids. And the village of Marinette kids that do not have the option to go to Rye and play in Rye or play in Large Pond. They're the kids that walk to the harbor, <laughs> that rely on the scholarships, that are going to see funds and gives to them. Those are the kids that are going to get eliminated from the cut down team. I'm not sure why we would choose to do that. A lot of members of this board, or a solid member of this board, recently ran on the concept of enlarging 
and bringing everybody in, listening to different opinion. And I think it's great. And I supported that. And I encourage you to do that here. To, to think critically about what's being heard and what waiting until we can make a make a dog park work in a better way without hurting the kids in this village. Because I know there's a lot of noise about a dog park. If you think there's nothing that needs to get done in the next six months, if it means because once it's up, those fields are out and our soccer program is smaller. And the kids that get hurt are the kids that don't have other options. So I encourage you to think strongly about it. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Melissa Cosby, and my address is 1402 Franklin Avenue. Franklin Avenue. Um, two things. One, you did mention that this has been ongoing for 20 years, longer. Easy. Okay, that's a little sad, um, in my opinion. The fact that Rye has a dog park, Harrison has a dog park, Marichelle has a dog park. Um, I'm a realtor, a local realtor, and most, I would say 50% of the homes you guys want to sell. The people that are coming up in my homes are coming up from Brooklyn, the Bronx, Manhattan, Queens, and all of them have dogs. That's why they're living here. Good. And they're buying your houses. They're asking me, where are their dog parks? And if they're going to stop, if they want to be in a place where there's a dog park, which everyone, I'm from Brooklyn, every neighborhood has their own dog park. I mean, they do. So perhaps they'll start looking now in Rye, or they'll look in Marinette. Oh, and excuse me, Rye, Larchmont, elsewhere. Um, I have a dog, I'm completely for it. Um, I think the fact that somebody found this spot, there's a reason why they found this spot. Um, you know, if, if it was a field that you were taking away, that's a different story. But if it's a place where people practice, and they were not trying it, I will buy it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, ben Foster, 104 Florence Street, the Maranek. Um, so I'm actually involved in the soccer club. I've been involved with uh, the large one of the Maranek soccer club now for uh, 19 years. Um, and what's gradually happening, and I think it's to do with uh, demographics, more kids moving into the community and everything. Um, the field space situation has been getting critical for a long time and it's getting worse and worse and worse and this what's happening now i totally agree there needs to be a dog park um the village in the Marinic has been incredible to our soccer club with the amount of use we've been getting out of um, harbor island but the reality is it's really all that's left um we used to use flint park a lot but the schools have taken over that a lot the other sports programs have grown and we get very little use of flint park over in large one we get very uh we used to use lorenda and that's now all baseball Comments with school uses that. So this is the only space. And I would say now in, in the village of Mamarine, the most popular sports are baseball and, and soccer. And it is used so much. We're talking, we're not talking like tens of kids on here at this time. We're talking hundreds of kids. And that space is essential to us, particularly for the recreational kids um, that are entirely village of Mamarine kids that need to use that space. Our, our travel soccer club, which is all large one of the Marinette kids, is the biggest in the county by, by a long way. It's very popular. Um, I just urge you to, I, I just don't see how that can work with hundreds and hundreds of kids around there playing between the hours of, yeah, like three o'clock to, to 6.30 and then on the weekends, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I, 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 I get it. I, it must be so hard to find a place for a dog park, mm -hmm. but I, there must be somewhere better than that. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I do think you bring up a good point that our, our neighbors uh, have kind of dropped the ball a little bit and it's fallen upon us. Hi, I'm Hilary Short. I live at um, 151 Animal Road and I'm in support of the dog park. Um, I don't have children um, and I don't understand the whole soccer thing, so I can't speak to that. But, you know, and I can't disagree or agree to that. And I probably have had children that I would, you know, support your point of view. But I do, you know, think that the dog should be in all the parts in the village. I think, you know, I've never lived somewhere where there's so much restriction on dogs allowed. I mean, in New York City, my dog goes everywhere. He loves the parks. He's, you know, the 
specifically in those parts and the parts, you know, and there's hundreds of people in the park in New York City, you know, and the dogs are not biting everybody or attacking anyone or, um, and the dogs that aren't social don't go to dog parks. I mean, I walk the streets around here and my dog goes leaping over and people go, my dog's not friendly. I mean, I think people know when their dogs are not going to be friendly. And I go to the dog park. I go to the harbor all the time with my dog. I live right there. And um, there's lots of dogs down there. With, like somebody else said, when people are playing soccer. I just don't understand the thought that the dog park, I thought dog park committee and the board, I trusted had looked into whether there, this was being used as a field. You know, I thought that it wasn't being used as a field. And is this correct, this narrative that the children won't have a field to play on if we take that small section away? It is not an and official field that is not uh, at least uh, given out for games. Apparently, uh, teams practice on it. So no one's been down there and sort of watched to see what's going on. I mean, when I go there, there's been the games are going on, but I think that needs to be more monitored. Okay, thank, thank you. Yes. Um, I'm from Great from Seven Eagle Drive. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, from where? Seven Eagle Drive. Um, and I'm a member of the committee, uh, the community, and I have kids who play soccer in the community as well. And I'm into the shorts of this game. <laughs> Um, but the location that is being discussed is 100% used during the week um, by kids, hundreds of kids, and um, the sports fields are very limited in our community to take away another. Um, it's really sad for the kids that put these poor kids need to get outside and exercise, and um, this isn't the time to be taking away fields from them. I think that if um, if you drive down Boston Coast Road between three and seven, um, parking and congestion is already a problem, and so adding another element is not helpful. Um, and you know, if this committee has been looking for twenty years um, for a location, I think there's a reason. I think that there's not a good location in our neighborhood. Um, and since we've been looking for twenty years, I think we can wait six more months. And I welcome everyone to come down between three and six. Monday through Friday and sleep hundreds of kids who literally play where you're talking about. So, Thank you. Hi, my name is Marisa Nguzifi, and I live at 910 Stewart Avenue. And I um, am also on the dog park committee. I was on the previous committee and the previous subcommittee, and now I'm on the ad hoc committee. And just to dispel any questions about it, um, we have done truly our due diligence to find a good location for this dog. And we have vetted every single available field that, you know, that could possibly have been used. And we really came to an intelligent, thoughtful, well thought out decision when we decided to, you know, put forth to the mayor and to the board that, the best location really is field next to the waste uh, water treatment plant. And I hear everybody, I understand it, but I just want to ask you to consider one thing. This village is a village of inclusion and a village of diversity. And that, you know, that encompasses so many things. It's ethnic diversity and cultural diversity and religious diversity. And it's wonderful that we embrace that. But there's one level of diversity that you may not have realized. Family diversity, okay? So not everybody's family looks the same as many of you here and many of you who are against the dog park. Um, not everybody has children. We, I love children. I, I don't have them, wasn't lucky enough to have them, but, and I think it's wonderful that this village embraces them and there's a youth sports, um, you know, Parks and Rec embraces that but not everybody has it. And you have to consider the senior who might be an empty nester or maybe never had children has a dog and they would love to have a place 
to just walk to, like the harbor, it's to spend a half an hour or an hour just, you know, communing with their neighbors and getting their dogs some exercise. Not everybody has a luxury of getting their dog in a car and driving to a different village. And we shouldn't even be considering that as an option. You know, we should really be concerned about the amenities that this village has. And it's a village for everybody, not just one section of, of society. So I just want you to consider that when, when you say no. Thank you very much. Say yes. thank, you for, thank you for your service. Thank you. Hello, my name is Diane Hayden. Uh, I uh, own a home on 1403 Harrison Avenue but I'm currently living at 910 Stewart. Uh, so I have been a member of the village of Vermarinette for over 30 years as a mother, and I was a grandmother. I do not have anyone else, or did not have anyone else in my home except for my dog until recently he died. Sorry. I Thank you. I've had many dogs while I lived here. I care for my children. I care for my grandchildren. I think what we're not looking at is there are other places our children also can utilize that our dogs can't, such as Florence Park, which has been extremely neglected and is huge and is completely underutilized. If anybody wants to go near there on any time of day, you will see that it is a wonderful space, but not for dogs. Why? Because there are homes all surrounding it and the dogs go. But it would be a wonderful place for those children to have extra practice space to even put children to be able to play. Why are we using it? Why aren't we fixing it up and using that for our children? It has become a disgrace for our children. It used to be beautiful and it used to be used a lot. Okay, it isn't. They've only found one place appropriate for the dog park. But we do have other places appropriate for children to play that we're not using. I don't even know if we're, excuse me, I'm speaking. I apologize. Mm, please do not speak from the audience. Please do not speak from the audience. Okay. I also don't understand why we're not uh, working with the schools more closely. There's a huge field in back of uh, Daniel Warren that is not used to the extent it should be used. We could use that for a field. And it is a field, by the way. It is a beautiful, huge field. Okay. Why are we using that? Why are we talking to the school system and using that for our children? So there is a compromise in between if you look at it, if you really investigate it. Thank and you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Catherine. Hi, I'm Catherine Miller. I live at 528 Monroe Avenue, about two blocks from Harbor Island. And just as a previous speaker, I too have been in the Marinette for about 30 years. Of course, when we move to the dogs and children, we coexist. Uh, it's not one against the other. But after all, people have been looking for a long time for dog park location. And this one seems to be the one that works best for many, many reasons. We just heard a speaker who saw that there are other places where playing fields can be located. So that's one consideration. Um, as Marissa said earlier, you are a family friendly village, but not all families include children, but many, many families include dogs. And, you know, the people who own dogs have had really not much uh, going for them. I mean, they have a lot going for them, but they, we haven't had many concessions, okay? And this is something that's so good, not just for the dogs, who many of them. If they're not in enclosed yards, they have no other way to run free. So they're on a leaf or in a house. For the dog park, let the dog do what the dog wants to do naturally. Play and frisk and pee and jump. This is fun. It's fun for the owners. It's nice for the village. And one other consideration. One piece of land would be used only between 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock. If it's a dog park, it will get used from seven in the morning till seven at night. So um, I hope you go through with the plan and have a dog park where it should be, right by the sewage plant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The call. You guys. Three minutes. Hello. Hello. Three minutes. <laughs> Thirty minutes. <laughs>
Turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> so I'm not certain if I should be here, but I'm going to speak because I've heard, and Tom, you and I go back 30, 35 years. And I've been here for 65 years. So I know the ins and outs, basically, okay, more than a lot of other folks here. So, number one, let me state I want a dog park. Do I think that's the ideal spot where you present um, that came up with the ad hoc committee and others? Absolutely not. Because it is a practice field. It's not a playing field, but it's a practice field. Tom, you know as well as I do, and Kathy, we've been battling for field for years. Mm -hmm. Not only in Mamarin, all the surrounding communities. And the issue that we have in this community, I feel, okay, number one, I think that we should be doing it on the pages we spoke about. Many people here at various other boards too, number one. Second place I feel, and it's always NIMBY, not in my backyard. There's plenty of space in this community, but we will not develop it. Rushmore Avenue, mm -hmm. Taylor's Lane are always off limits, always for obvious reasons. I've told you in the past, and I've told a couple other board members, I am going to pursue those two parcels. And she's right in reference to Florence. And we should be able to allow kids, okay, whether it's baseball, soccer, hockey, field hockey, whatever it may be, the hours to play from three to six, basically. You live in the park area, there's noise there. I lived on Stanley. Go down there now, the basketball boys are playing. The gods, okay? Soccer as well. I used to practice on Rushmore, okay? It was illegal. I used to practice it because we could find space anywhere. I left my mark to go to Bronxville to, to play because I had space. Started my own little league. We need to basically either start thinking about Rushmore and Taylor's Lane. Look what Harrison has done recently at Home Run Park. It's a passive park, like five more minutes, Tom. No, no, you get three minutes. Right. You get he rings the bell, I'll go. Okay. But if you look at Harrison, basically, what they've done there at Home Run Park, and it's flooded, and there used to be a junk yard there, basically. Guess what? It's a beautiful park now. It's a passive park that we can do also, a walking park with exercise. I'll continue. I'm sorry, Jerry, but I had to do it because I finally, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. right. So please consider those other two parcels. What's it called in Harrison? What's the park? Home Run Park. It's right near the shopping center. Down Holstead Avenue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On Holstead Avenue. That was on Holstead Avenue. Okay. Yeah. I know. Well, that. Yeah, we got that. Oh, Carla Rec of 314 Melbourne Avenue. I got my number over here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Most of the shooting. We got anything that we want to let you know. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Well, Jean Valley, um, 555 Walton Avenue. And I have lived here 43 years. My kids, my three kids, went all through the Marinette schools. Um, very happy with the community. Since we have lived here, the, the idea of limited space for recreation, whether it's for soccer, baseball, any, any of the teams, it's always been an issue. Um, living really close to Harbor Island now as a senior citizen, I use Harbor Island all the time. I do go for walks. I, I just like being up again, you know? And I guess I wonder why it is so important for dogs to be off leash, you know, like, if these, and I know the fields are used. I know that field is used all the time. When you drive down Boston Post Road um, and you go, you know, as you approach the treatment center where um, we're talking about this being proposed, it is jammed. I mean, cars are parked everywhere. It is a very busy area. And, and you know, if you're going to enter the door park from the back, those parking lot that that gets busy too. I've been to many a game here. It, it's a busy, well used park, which is great. But I I don't see why dogs can't be on the leash and be with their families. And you know, it is a park for And so, aside from um, the cost of it, and who will keep track of the actual dog park area to clean it if dogs are in there all day. Um, you know, if all this goes through, yeah, there's a lot of other considerations 
aside from the field which I do know is used by hundreds of people all the time. So you know, there are some important issues to think of. Thank you very much. Clifford. Good evening, Richard Clifford. I live in the Regatta, one Prima Marinac Avenue. Um, I felt it was important as being a member of the ad hoc committee to just come in and be present and say, yes, I was on the committee. I participated in all the site visits. I read a letter that went to the mayor and the uh, trustees. It was not a perfect choice. We compromised on recommending this site. We said that there are serious problems with it. None of the problems were mentioned by any of these folks tonight. And I do appreciate hearing from them. But the field that was outlined in a map that you put on your Facebook page, Mayor, doesn't have hundreds of kids practicing there on a daily basis. When we went as a committee and inspected the site on just one day, there were three Hispanic families with their blankets on the ground having a family gathering. At the end of the day, they do not have cars. They do not have the opportunity to drive from their homes in Orient or wherever else they are in America or from the regatta and go off somewhere else to another park. This is where they, they recreate. They're not, there are not hundreds of people on the site that you put on your Facebook page with people practicing soccer there. They store the empty nets there. That's, what, that's where they store the unused equipment. I'm a, I'm a Premier League fan, long time. You know, I, I don't have an opposition to soccer. You know, I do have a dog, and I just thought I'd add, you know, I'm not driving anywhere. My dog lives in Mamaroneck with me. This week, 56.9 miles. This month, 228 miles. This year, 2,700 miles walking. That's the tracker in my pocket. Take your damn dogs and walk. That's what I told people. This is like putting in a fish farm in our community. People want fish from a fish farm. But you have a dog, have a dog park. Make it regulated. Don't have people running all over the place. But the voice that I said on the on our committee, I said the voices that are not being heard by any of these people talking about their precious children practicing soccer, that's only during grammar school. They're not talking about the Hispanic and other third world communities. They're using that lawn not to practice soccer, but to play volleyball, have a little picnic, a little get together at the end of the day. Someone needs on this. One of you trustees need to speak to the people there. So when we when we submitted our report, we said it's a compromise. This is the best site of many one, but none were better. You know, it was a compromise. But someone needs to take into consideration when wherever you put the park. Consider the poor Hispanic families, the people, the working class people in this community who are going to get moved from sitting there where they regularly sit. I live in the regatta right across the street, approximately. I see them there all the time. I don't see hundreds of kids in that section of the park to see soccer. That's ridiculous. The soccer fields are out in the middle. They're beyond the parking lot behind the water treatment plant. Yes. The practice field are not where you cited it. That is just hyperbole. That's like the comment section on the internet. So Thank that you. is all I have to say. Oh, thanks I, thanks for me, I walk there with my dog all the time. My father was a judge in large run for 26 years. Lou Young has dragged me in on a couple of these committees. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Richard. <laughs> I just want to be clear about that. I, I do not have a dog. I've never had a dog. I like dogs. <laughs> but I've I, I've lived in an apartment most of my life. My dog didn't like dogs. <laughs> you trained him that way. Uh, but I, I've had three children in this community who are very active in sports. Uh, I will have uh, two grandchildren who live in this community who I'm betting uh, are going to be active in sports too. So, you know, I, I understand this, but I, I, from my time in apartments, growing up in an apartment, and living in quite a few apartments in the Marinick, is the folks who live in those apartments that have dogs and don't have backyards and don't have, uh, you know, they, they don't have an area where they can just let the dog out. And, uh, you know, dogs like the frolic, you know, I, I go to uh, Ride Town Park and it's a hoop to watch the dogs. Uh, you know, just, it, 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 you know, it, 
I, I, I make up dialogue for them in my head, you know, and uh, because they're just so happy to see each other. This is a tough community land wise. You know, you could, you could go 50 miles upstate and this would never be a problem. You know, they have all the fields they need. They have all the open space they need. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to hurt any child, uh, but, I, but I also, you know, realize that there has been a, a promise made for decades and either we do it or we don't do it. Uh, I think that as other people have brought up, there are other areas that we can possibly accommodate children to play on. Uh, I don't want to ever see a kid not be able to play. Um, they, I, I grew up uh, with literally no fields. Uh, you know, the, we played everything on concrete because there was no there were no grass fields. Uh, and I, I wouldn't want that to happen to uh, the kids of this community. Uh, so I, th I think at this point, you know, the board has to make a decision. With and that decision would be either we refer the current location next to the sewage treatment plant to Harbor Coastal Zone Management because that's the next step. It has to have, you know, Harbor Coastal Zone Management uh, gives a consistency opinion to the board of trustees. They don't give it a consistency determination. Uh, if if you were doing something in the community land use that had to go before Harbor Post his own management, it would be a determination by them. Uh, and their say will be final. But to the village of Americ government, their uh, opinion, it's, it's an opinion and it's advisory. Is that right, Bob? Okay. So it's really up to the board. You know, what, what do you folks, uh, what, what's your want, W-O-N-T? All right, um, you know, this isn't about uh, soccer fields uh, or dogs either. It's about uh, an acre's worth of uh, uh, a, a park that we all share as a community. And I don't even think the dog park is about dogs necessarily. It's about people who own dogs, who meeting each other and, 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 uh, and uh, socializing. That's what happens at dog parks. The, the, the dogs running around is, is, is that much of it, I, I think. So um, I presume there, there's pen benches and stuff like that in the dog park, right? I haven't even... Right, I mean, you can go in the dog park and sit down. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not now, right? But no, in the future, now, no, oh, there's no, nothing there right. now. It's just a gigantic. Let me present, and I thought you were thinking of an existing dog park. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Um, and 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 from my from my observation, it's it's a it's a gigantic open space, um, uh, and um, and 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 you can practice in a lot of places. Uh, and 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 God bless the the, the the those soccer leagues for having having those, those fields there. But I think I think I think we can do this. I think we can we can put this um, this dog park in that location. And I tell you what, I would like to see uh, the village step up at some point and and permanently install some uh, some soccer fields in that area, uh, so that when they're not being used by the leagues, that that. Regular people can come up and do a pickup soccer game. I mean, there's no, I don't see anywhere in the village you can do that. I see them in, 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 in uh, you know, in Columbus Park, even though they're technically not allowed. But I'd, it'd be nice to be able to say, hey guys, you can go down to Harbor Island and do you take your pickup soccer game down there? Um, uh, I like to see the area in use all the time, as opposed to just crammed for a few hours during these seasons and then just vacant. I mean, a full. I don't see it jammed with people. I see it empty, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times it's empty. And, uh, and, uh, and that area being, st I, f I found those, uh, those uh, nets being stored there. Um, you know, I wonder about that too. Why, why are those nets just sitting there? The net, you know, vacant nets, it doesn't look very attractive, but that's a different issue. I mean, I would, um, I, I think we can proceed on this, uh, on this spot. I think for those who are anxious about it, um, uh, I am confident that when, uh, if and when it happens, that it'll be it, it'll be less um, burdensome than than you imagined. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can share this, and I think and I, I think it I think it's a, it's a positive move for our community. So I will I would uh, I would be voting yes on this, and I would like to. Um, uh, can I make a motion? I'd like a, I'd like to make a, make a motion. Well, what? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I just jump in. I'm sorry. <laughs> Any other board members like to comment? I have a comment. I have a process question. Um, my computer crashed, and so I'm using my phone, and I'm that's the downside of going 
paperless. I don't have an agenda in front of me, but um, we said that these the resolutions were going to be held, um, and the backup that we're voting on does not appear to be on the agenda. So I'm it's not on the online agenda. So the declaration of consistency, which we can actually do, the seeker typing, which we need to do before we send it, we haven't typed it yet for seeker, um, isn't isn't on our agenda. So I don't know. Um, is that a that may be a process problem. Well, they're just going to advise us on this, right? They're not, they're not, we're not getting permission from them, right? Well, we have, we ha we're the lead agency. It's an action that we're funding and undertaking. So mm -hmm. we're the lead agency. It's not a type two action. So it has to go for a consistency determination that we can either, that we, that's advisory. We don't have to agree with it. We can find, we can di dig, dive deep into the LWRP and make other findings. But my question is, how do we refer it if we don't have the documents on our agenda? Because we did say this was to be held. I'm just, that's just. We're, we're referring it to CZM, it'll come back to us. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Going based upon the agenda. Um, uh, yeah, they just, and that may, does anybody else have the documents on their agenda? Maybe it's, I'm just not seeing it on my phone, but I don't. There's all the backup from the, uh, Dog park committee. There, well, there's the minutes. The minutes from the dog park committee are what the backup is, but not the um, other stuff. And we did say to be held. That's all. Um, okay. And, and I would like to see if, if, if tonight, if we can get a, uh, if we started right on this. Well, could you could you give us an approximate, Jerry? Could you give us an approximate ribbon cutting date on this? Okay. Well, how long would it take you to to go to get to the end of it? Well, once we once we receive the. Defense material, we would need four weeks to construct it. And, and, and the uh, defense material is, is not ordered or? No, you can't order until yeah. Okay. Maybe it's not ordered. Well, Lana, you want to talk? I, I do want to say, like, thank you for everybody who came up or even showed up to talk about this issue. It is a long standing issue. I am a dog lover. I had a dog that passed. Um, and understand, you know, the need, you know, for persons who live in an apartment who don't necessarily have the land or um, individuals. And I really appreciated that comment about the diversity of families because not everybody has kids and I don't have kids yet. And that's important too, because I'm also, I'm always about inclusion, you know, thinking about people who don't have kids, but have dogs because that is their kid. And what do you do is the same type of thing. It just looks different. Things look different to different folks. So it's ensuring that we have space for everything and everybody. And our village is small and it's getting smaller by the minute as <laughs> um, even prior to us coming on board, there's been a lot of development in our community. I, I appreciated the, the comments about the school district. You know, we need to work with our school districts. We need to work with our, another, our, our partnering, our neighboring municipalities because we can use their fields too, but there's things that we need for our community, for our residents. Um, I truly believe, because I did run on it in terms of needing things for our youth. I grew up using those fields because I, I played soccer. And that's how, as far as my, you know, athletic, <laughs> uh, my athletic career went, but um, I understand the need for the kids to um, have fields but we also do have other places to um, to play on. I'm, I am in favor of the dark park. I do understand that the, the ad hoc um, committee present and past has done extensive um, research on it. And is it perfect? Nothing is perfect. Nothing in this world is perfect, nothing. Cause we are, a, are we excluding some families? <laughs> Oftentimes we do. We not think we most times when people make decisions, they're thinking about themselves and they don't think about other people. And it's so important for us as a board to think about everyone. And that's what makes the job so difficult. So if we have space for our kids, God knows I don't want to take anything away from them because I do believe that we need stuff for all of our kids, not just our young kids, but also our teenagers. And we're missing a lot of stuff for them too. We built a whole daggone swim tank in the flats that the kids in the flats can't even use because they can't even afford it. And we even think about that. So 
I appreciate everybody's comments that I'm gonna go for. Uh, Manny, you got something to say? Uh, I think overall, and I've kind of gone back and forth in my mind with all the, you know, the, the comments tonight and the emails that have been coming in over the last few months. And, you know, I I believe our community really does need a dog park. I know the, it seems like tonight the debate, it's like, for, it's like the soccer versus the dogs. It's, it, that's what's really going on here. It's just we're, people are in fear of losing our soccer field. But I think we really need to think about, as Leilani said, we need to think about how can we partner with our schools. They have amazing fields and, and how are we not leaning on them to kind of you know, being supportive of us and letting our children play on those fields. I also think that, it, you know, the other neighboring communities are kind of like, like falling on us to kind of come in and have all soccer played in the village of America, but we're not looking at how can it be played in a town? How can it be played in the village of Larchmont? It's kind of, we call it the LMFC, but it's really the VOMFC because everything is played in the village. And I just think that's unfair of us to not want to develop more for our community and have our residents in mind and want to kind of be stale and stay here and be like, oh, we only have to think about that, but we actually need, we need to lean on those municipalities and yeah. our school district to kind of kind of come in and fill in and support and you know make their field available to you know to our children because we all at the end of the day want to make sure our kids have a place a, a place to play and they have the field place to do it. Not it's not just the village of America. Thank you. Um, did you want to make a motion? Oh. Is I did want to make a motion. May I now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, proceed with the um, with the Harbor Island location for the dog park as the uh, as originally proposed, and um, referring and it to uh, HZMC. Referring to yeah to the to the uh, Harbor Coastal, and uh, and at the same time, I don't think we should. I don't think we should wait for uh, for word back from them. We should begin to 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 uh, get the fencing and 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 start the process. So we're not uh, yeah. waiting on on the on on their discretion. You know, I mean, uh, just mm -hmm. tell them that we're doing it. Let us know if there's any problem. Hmm? I don't know if you read the no. Oh. Just let it go to the agents. Okay, I so just. Uh, <laughs> I move we. I move that we move uh, with, that we proceed with the uh, Harbor Island. We don't, have, we don't have a resolution. I mean, there what there is no resolution. It's part of our problem. We don't have the backup. Right. We had a resolution, but I don't think we have it. it. He, he's made a motion to refer this to the Harbor oh, Coastal Commission. So, so, so then, for, for advisory consistency. For advisory consistency. Before we do that, we have to declare that it's a that we're lead agency and it's a type two action. I mean, that's no, a, because yeah. they're not making a decision. No, so yeah. speaker is not required to do on before they act. Right, have to do before, before we spend the money. Okay, so I I, uh, I move that we refer it to Harbor Coastal. Second, Augustino. Trustees Rawlings. Yes. Geyser Reed. Yes. Trustee Young. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Um, I'm voting no because I don't feel it's a binary choice, and I think that um, we the last in the last two months the Rec and Parks Commission has decided to do like a an in-house master plan of the parks, and there there may be re changes recommended to a variety of parks. And I think that while I think 20 years is a long time, I think we should be planning more strategically and comprehensively as we're doing with the comp plan. So I think it's premature. And I do love dogs. I am no longer a dog owner. I have been a dog owner. And um, I, I think we need a dog park. And I just don't know if this is the right place for the dog park. It's a no. It's a no. Okay. Uh, I'm voting yes. And uh, you know, I, I, I wrote an email before and I said, listen, the hard part about this job is that you make decisions that uh, can't satisfy everybody. And uh, that that's but that that's that's the job and uh, i want to add too and sadly the easiest thing to do is do nothing yeah and yeah. And, and that that has been the default position that's been village for well for many years so can i can i just add um even if i even though i made a decision for the dog park that does not mean that i don't care about kids no, not at all i advocate for kids on, on a daily basis so this is just one part of this job that we have to take care of, but that doesn't mean that there's there's not not other ways that we can advocate, we can build spaces, and we can we can truly have spaces for all people and all animals. So I really just want to emphasize that. 
I, I, can I also add something when you're done too? Go ahead. Yeah. I also want to add too that I, I know, like I, I am leading on to the parks and rec, and I know we are, you know, talking about some master plan for for all our parks. I don't want people to think that just because we chose this location for a dog park, as we are beginning the process to kind of review all of our parks, we can identify not even, you know, how to and identify how to enhance some of those parks to be able to see if there is adequate field space that we could potentially have something else there. Like that is that is that is the goal. We don't want to just kind of think we're taking this away and there's no place to practice. But I think when we're reviewing all of our parks to come up with an idea that we are pushing forward, thinking that we know field space is a luxury here and we know that we have a lot of it and soccer is very prominent, but there's also other things that are very prominent that are not in our parks that we need to think about and to add. And that's soccer. I think a big thing now is we're seeing from talking to our rec superintendent is pickleball, tennis, basketball. There are a lot of other items that are not in our parks that we're not thinking about. So I think we also need to take in consideration that this is not just a, a soccer community. I know that's, you know, what we see the most because it gets the most signups, but I think we're missing a lot of other things as well. All right. Thank you. <laughs> that uh, that concludes this portion. I, but I just want to thank everybody who came up to the mic. Four, four to one. Uh, for everybody who came out tonight and spoke rationally and uh, emphatically and uh, just and, and you know, in, in a well-meaning demeanor, I really appreciate it because I know this isn't easy and I know that people have strong feelings, but thank you very much. All right. What's that? Just part of life. There's a lot more meeting to go. Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Thanks for the Mallory. You stay. Thank you. And yeah. you came from the stretch code before. How's your legs? Do you believe? Do you believe you've got two minutes? Walk around. One. Only did one. Only did one. It's not easy to read. No, we only did this. I'm ready to go. I know. <laughs> I'm getting hot. It's fine. I need. I can hold my bench. Okay. Something that has been discussed. We, we have to continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, I, I thought it was us. Catherine, much sorry. We've got to continue. Thank you. It's 9 30. We haven't hit our agenda yet. Oh, Jesus. All right. It's not a thing. All right. The uh, next item on the agenda, gosh, is uh, communication to the board. Yes, that was all the communication. Lovely <laughs> voice in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, could you shut that a little bit? Thanks, sorry. Go ahead. Hi, Allison. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Allison Stabile, 517 Parkway. Um, I stood up on November 14th and asked some questions regarding the First Amendment to the Wireless Telecommunications Lease Agreement. And I, from what I could tell listening to the work session, it sounds like you've delayed it for mm -hmm. two weeks. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes. the sound uh, coming through on my TV was bizarre and there was a lot of like ambient noise so I couldn't quite hear what you know the conversation so that's why I came tonight to make sure <laughs> that that what I heard was what I thought I heard mm -hmm. um so it sounded to me like you're going to take time to get testing done they, they, they have to do testing as a matter of law we're going to get their most recent test okay so um that's great. Um, I, I guess one of my several questions is when you get the results of the whatever questions you're asking about testing, how will you convey that information to people like me who ask questions that we haven't gotten responses to yet? Any documentation we receive will be posted with the agenda. Will be posted, I'm sorry? On the agenda. With the agenda. Okay. Um, all right, I'm not quite sure I understand how that's going to answer my questions, but um, 
and just thought a straightforward explanation or a write-up or something, you know, because I have a couple of other comments that I wanted to make on the topic. So I just thought I would take the opportunity to do it now and maybe in a couple of weeks time when the other issue that you're asking about, perhaps you get those answers, maybe some of the other things that I'm concerned about you could consider as well and respond to both, okay? Um, so I don't know if you got uh, my email. I, I, that wasn't clear either. I hope, I hope you did. Um, yes. I, I, great. So I wanted to just make a couple of comments um, to clarify my concerns about the um, insurance aspect of this agreement. Um, based on what I've learned, the insurance required under the agreement is inadequate and the agreement in its current form does not protect the village or its residents. Um, there, first, there is a standard exclusion in insurance policies for any claims of physical injuries suffered from wireless radiation. The telecom industry is required to comply with FCC wireless emission limits, and that's what you guys are going to investigate. What if those limits are exceeded and they cause harm to residents? And not just two weeks or maybe a couple of you know, months that you may be asking these questions, but going forward, years and years. The village is not protected from those claims, and the village would have to pay out on those claims. Is the village prepared to do that? Secondly, there's an expectation that the insurance that Wireless Edge is providing will first apply to the event of claims. Yet the agreement fails to require that the insurance be primary and not contributory to any insurance maintained by the village. That means that the village's insurance will have to be exhausted before Wireless Edge's insurance kicks in. I know you all want to make money. I know that's one of the goals of this structure. Um, and that's great. Everyone wants to make money for the village, but just on the insurance issue, if these are, if my my comments play out, the village is going to lose more than it makes. Um, are you aware that wireless radiation is classified as a pollutant by the wireless industry? Mm. I think I stated that in my email earlier. Verizon, AT and T, and Sprint all acknowledge wireless radiation as a pollutant in their consumer device protection brochures. They disclaim insurance coverage for pollutants in their brochures. Why would we want the same disclaimer in our insurance policies? Um, so I hope that, you know, the other things I was gonna say, I, I put in a letter, I don't think I need to read them again. I think I need to reiterate that all the other municipalities like Ithaca, Bishkel, Copeg, Woodstock, Stock, Scarsdale, 17 smaller villages in North Hempstead have all recognized these issues related to the telecom industry. And New York City is actively engaged in the process. And boy, oh boy, you should plug in on Google and watch some of those uh, sessions in New York City because that's really interesting. I know you're into, I know this board's mission is to get things done, but I'm I think that hasty action on, on adopting this First Amendment. So the wireless telecom uh, lease agreement, I think hasty action on this without really going back and, and looking carefully at this agreement and how it affects the village residents and the village overall and the village residents going forward is going to backfire on you and you're going to have you. problems. Thank you, Els. All right. Thank you. Um, I just don't understand the rationale for extending a lease by doubling it and in an era where the technology is constantly changing and a few years from now, everything may be different. Thank so, you all, some time is expended. Okay, thank you. So all these, all these questions will be answered in an agenda item, Dan? Your, your, your time is expended, Allison, please. Okay, just one more. Yes, sir. Robert Starr, I'm a fourth on the court. I'm a member of the traffic committee. Um, I'm not talking about, I'm not representing the traffic committee. 
I'm here to uh, try to save the village some uh, from destroying property that or equipment that the village recently purchased. Specifically, I'm talking about speed homes, speed homes that uh, apparently last year in September, speed homes as a pilot program were installed on Grand Street between um, Plaza and Old White Plains Road. And it's my understanding that uh, speed humps need to be removed during the winter in order to prevent them from being damaged from snow ties. We're already in the, in the middle of the winter. So my question is, are the speed humps going to be removed to prevent them from being damaged? Sure. No. Why not? Because we will go over the speed humps and deal with it um, as we plow. We're proficient enough to plow over speed humps, just like when New Rochelle and other communities install speed humps, they go over them. Be careful. Uh, of course. I just want to pass out where I got this from, so. Thank you. I didn't think you was making it up. I wasn't. Thank you. I think you asked me to answer and answer this. Yeah, and I'm going to see Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to start. What was that? You didn't start on me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You're going to see him. Just do what so you got to do. I'm going to read this for the people who have known that you don't have it. Uh, it's from the minutes of December 13, 2021, Board of Trustees meeting. It's a, it's a discussion about spring months. I'm going to read what it says. Mayor Murphy gave back and he suggested buying a few temporary speed humps and consulting with the traffic commission to ascertain where most complaints are. I don't know if you ever consulted with us. I'm going to skip over some other stuff, but I'm going to read what Mr. Barbario stated at the meeting. Mr. Barbario stated that they need to be removed in winter as the clouds were sending them flying. He knows this as he has been stories in other municipalities. So I guess that the other municipalities who didn't know enough to uh, go over the speed bumps without reporting without damaging them. No? Yeah, you make your statement, please. Okay, I also have another comment. I don't have a dog in the fight. I wanted to say that. Uh, I don't have a dog in the fight. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Great. I don't need any comments from you. Uh, Are you um, um, just, but my comment is this. That I heard a lot of people have different opinions about whether there is enough placements for kids to play. Not that. Like different opinions. The one person that I heard that seemed to have most Knowledge with was this guy up here who said he's been working in, in a soccer field for many years, and he said there is no other place in the village for kids to play. So you've made the decision to approve the field, uh, dog park, which is fine. But it seems to me you've also made a commitment to make sure that you will find other places for kids to play. You've talked about uh, other schools, you've talked about other communities. So it seems to me you have an obligation now to follow up on that, not just to say we're going to find more students. You have a burden of finding more places for kids to play. And I, for one, will be following up in months and years to ask that question, have you found more places for kids to play? I will be following up on that. So I'm just letting you know. That's it. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Hey, Paul. Hello, I'll make it short and brief. I promise. Carlo and I go from 14 Melbourne Avenue. Danny, thank you very much for that last statement. I the Boggle, of course, throughout the common for all the parts were awesome. So, 1998 is when I started with Taylor's life. Joe Clanza was mayor at that time. It took approximately 25 years. Tom, you know, Kathy left. Extremely involved with that. And we still haven't had closure on, we still haven't gotten answers. And I'm getting to the point where, like I said before, I'm going to start pushing with the documents that I've had in the past. And I got rid of a lot of them because you know I have with George. George came to a meeting, I had blueprints and so forth. I would like to know when will we get closure 
Like I was like, whether it's to do something similar to what Harrison did with a passive park with a walking track, can we, can we not? Can we have t-ball for kids that are this big, soccer, whatever it may be? We need to pursue that. Let me, have to get, let me get you an answer. Go ahead. So the, the, the answer is we are working on the, what's called the site management plan. Uh, we need to get that adopted or approved by the state of New York, uh, the TEC. As far as the future use of the site, um, the restriction is we can't do anything that would pierce the cap. Now, what that means, I, I can't give you an answer. Is what we do on today, on today, on today. Yeah, there you go. But in terms of what our restrictions are, as long as we don't pierce the cap, I think that that's what this, the state of our concern is, and that's what's going to be our long term commitment. And we can't have activity on the field without piercing the cap, Dan. We've had a discussion. Okay. You can do a walk. Yeah, that, 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 he's not saying you could. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm just saying, you're just, just yeah. but there are possibilities yeah. of developing it without piercing. Yeah. Bottom line, I just want closure. That's what I want. It's just closure. I agree with you. 25 years, talk about 2008, 1998, Joe Lanza, I started, and right up the line. And Phil Trifoletti came up with blueprints. The two soccer fields on there. I remember that. Okay. Tom, you know the deal. Yeah. So I just want it to come to closure and just say, okay, it's off limits. We can't do anything and go from there. Gotcha. I can't think about closure too, considering this odyssey. Yeah. No, no, I agree with you, Dan. Dan. It's been painful. It started in 1988. That was yeah. great. Yeah. Dan, <laughs> what does putting a fence in that would seem like it would be piercing the cap? I mean, do we know what, like, what activities are we know what a cap, cap is? Yeah, we can put yeah. a fence around the cap, yeah, around the cap, around the cap, right? The, the preferred um, uh, post uh, landfill use for these cap landfills is, is uh, for the according to the DEC, is what I think they're kind of agnostic as long as they don't, you don't see the cap. I mean, I know one of the discussions that we had uh last year was about the possible uh, solar installations. Uh, the state has actually, uh, I, I, they have encouraged that type of use mm -hmm. on former landfill sites. Right. But again, I, I, I think as long as we don't pierce the cap, I think that's. Let call finish. Yeah. No, no, sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I, Great. Sorry. No, okay. yeah, I think the state is going to be agnostic as long as we don't pierce the cap. Got it. So I do have documentation that says it can be activity. Yeah. And we're all. For so, example, I agree you. that post soccer on rollers, yeah. to mm -hmm. it's not that I'm advocating for team sports, we'll say. I'm advocating for something to be developed there. I hate it. Possible. End the story. Thank and you, A walk and track for seniors, as I said before. End the story. But I just want this to go away. It's just been way really too long. So, so, so I'm sorry. Yeah, I can. When, sorry, I, when, I, when I met you, we both had little kids. Now we're both seniors. <laughs> The legacy program yep. I was involved in, you were yep. there. Yep. You know, the feel for kids, I was there. Yep. Okay. So I know. I know. I, I, know. I don't need to, you know, preach. Jerry, what you uh, Mayor, Mayor, I was consulted from, from LaBelle, uh, LaBella, Richard, um, on November 16th, sent Dan and I an email. The NYSDC told me last week, this was in November, that they plan to complete their review of our revised SMP. By the end of November, I don't believe the village will be required to address any issues such as encroachment. Um, however, um, the village could potentially use the SMP to force the issue with the tenant. Since then, that tenant um, he calls it a, calls him a tenant. I call him a squatter. Um, was um, it seems that the land that is um, being used for encroachment is not ours, it's the town of Rise. So that's not an issue anymore. But our consultant is on top of it with us as much as it's just not us, probably. It's the no, I believe, I just, we, we want to close that out. Best, we yeah. want to close that out right. so that this board can have the ability to, to do decide and do whatever right. they want to do. Right. We, we just can't. Like you can't push the DEC, nor can our consultant more than what we're doing. So. But Jerry, just for me, bad taste in my mouth, you know, whether it's Taylor's Lane or the pier. 
from outside agencies. Yes. You know, it's just it's it's frustrating. Correct. Frustrating. Yeah, frustrating. because we like to do things quickly and we like to get things done. Other agencies, it's just not. It's not so I'm please, you know, and again, I'm sorry to say that it's not. No problem. It's, you know, it's like. Yeah. You're going to address it immediately. You're not going to wait forever. Yeah, don't hold the PC because they're not going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got to move on. So, thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. Bye bye. Good night, Carla. We have promised community input on whatever happened on Taylor Lane over the years. So, we need to be mindful of that. <laughs> yeah. None of that. Or it can happen. Yes, yeah. we get the clean bill. Yeah, from, right. It's just ridiculous how long. Yes. Yeah. No. I, so it, 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 since it, day one that I got here, Dan's been trying to. Okay, it's almost ready. So that's horrible. Before you got here, we thought it was ridiculous. I've, I've had to enlist the assistance of the assembly that was correct mm -hmm. three times to urge the DEC yeah. to get yes. just to get their attention. That's exactly right. All right. Let, let's let's go to the agenda. Please. Uh, no public hearings. Order the bills. Resolution authorizing budget transfers for IDA and planning expenses. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. I need a motion. So moved. Augie Call. Trustees Rollins? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing budget amendment for Parks Department contract services. Uh, this is $6,720 uh, from parks revenue to appropriate parks department contract services. Questions or concerns? No. Who to approve? Second. Or you call. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? I. <laughs> uh, okay, resolution authorizing to ex execute budget amendment to fund clerk treasurer supplies. Uh, $1,941 from the general uh, revenue, general fund revenue uh, to general fund appropriations. Oh, well, you already breaking a lot of pencils over there? No. Okay. Minute books, right? There are okay. records. That's a good stuff. All right, I'll make the motion. Second. Call. Trustees Rowling? Yes. Daniel Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes, thank Mayor you. Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next is a resolution of supplemental appropriation and budget transfer to fund police overtime for the remainder of the fiscal year. Uh, this is uh, taking 350000 out of the general fund and 150000 out of police department personnel services and putting it into the police department overtime. And what's been going on is that we have been down uh, six officers. And we're, we're, we're hiring new ones now, but this of course uh, rose the overtime because you have to have a certain amount of staffing. So uh, our officers had to work extra overtime to does, uh, cover the shifts. Does this also, is this also impacted by police details for the, I yes, and I and great. some I and I some so some of this gets reimbursed. Right. So some of it might be reimbursed yeah. for their other state, projects. There's a lot of state police detail uh -huh. on Boston Post Road for required two or three police officers. Right. On, um, but we would get construction days, we but, get reimbursed. But we get reimbursed for that. Mm -hmm. So there are right, but, our I and I stuff, which are which is paying for it right. after we go. How, we how have much of it is I and I then? So, yeah, a couple, right? Four hundred and ninety thousand special diesel, two hundred thousand I and I. I mean, so so, of, of what we're approving, how much is I? Just say it. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's so it's not too high. We won't get that. We can't. <laughs> we'll get back two hundred. I didn't nine believe nine. you. Did we? But we budgeted for that, right? Right. Yeah. So that so that has to that gets paid. But it's a pass through. Yeah, it's a pass through. That gets paid back. So okay, it's part of the sewer project. So this doesn't impact the budget the way it seems like it might. No. Is what I'm, and there's 150 from personnel moving into overtime yeah. because she's long on personnel. Right. So, right. So, that, that, that's salaries that would have went to offices who were hired, who weren't hired, Correct. is now going to overtime. Right. Yeah. And as of today, we have only one police officer who is on long term disability, um, disability or, or uh, working stop. Okay. And that will be resolved within the next two months. Okay. Any motion? So moved. Second. Org. 
Trustees, Rowling? Yes. Geyser Reed? Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is abstract of audited vouchers. Oh, no, the abstract of manual vouchers. I'm sorry. Uh, $11,358.13. Um, most of these are utility payments, either to uh, Westchester Joint Waterworks or to Electrical. Uh, any questions, concerns? I'll make the motion. Second. Call Ogie. Trustees, Rowling? Yes. Guys, you read? Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, next up is abstract of manual vouchers. And this is a very light one tonight. Uh, $334,696.71. Uh, any questions or concerns? No. Actually, I had one, just out of curiosity. Uh, under the Medicaid reimbursement, at the very end is uh, Trustee Natchez, right? And he... With it's 1066, like the invasion of uh, Britain. Uh, it's 1066. But how is that if he just if he just retired? How do we owe him that much money? As a retiree, we pay for his Part B Medicare. Part B Medicare calculation is beyond my comprehension, but it is a bill that the former employee receives. That I, I understand it, but he just became a former employee a month ago. A month ago. So how did how do you rack up a thousand dollar bill? Well, I think his bill potentially would be a thousand dollars per month. I don't think he's racking it up. If you look at the payments for Medicare, yeah, but nobody else is a thousand a month. So others are high, but not as much as that. It's all based on income and all of that calculation. Like I said, you my my company. I don't. Think okay. I, I don't but, okay. The, I, do that. me a favor. Tomorrow, let me know if that's going to be a thousand dollars every month. Sure. Thank you. It's more than you made as a trustee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll make a motion. Second. <laughs> Hold a roll. Trustees, Rowling. Yes. Yes. You read. Yes. Young. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Old business, we took care of 3A for now. Resolution, actually, First Amendment, we're not going to do right now. And I don't think we're going to do 3C. So, you should withdraw 3C. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. We'll take care of it as we weather next time. Okay, great. Uh, well. New business, there is none. It's pretty darn remarkable. Um, let's see. Okay, communication through board round two. Mercifully, no one's gone. Saw so, you got anything to say? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> thank you. Uh, report from the village manager. Number four items uh, we need to file for the record. One of them from Millennium Strategies. The other is the grant agreement uh, with DOS for the harbor seawall design. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we have agreement with McCarthy Kingar and Adams uh, Kinsterman for our uh, land use and planning board and village attorneys. Okay. Uh, have you heard? You've heard from DEC on the um, on the uh, ACE permits on the uh, permits for, for dredging. DOS. We've heard, we've heard from DOS. DOS. DOS has provided our consultant. A list of about nine points that we need to address. Some uh, an item that comes to mind is that uh, that can mean that can mean however you pronounce it. Um, um, uh, study, yeah, uh, which our consulting engineer is doing. Um, they required us uh, to um, do certain um, additional survey work. So what they're basically making us do is go through the entire process as if we were um, a regular entity, a regular applicant, and no consideration, no accommodation. We are going through, according to our consultant, in my conversation with him, they are making them, they are making you go through every single, every single letter of, of uh, 
their guidelines. Um, every single one. Well, wasn't there something in there about wanting proof or did... from us? Yeah. Proof of what? Proof of what? I don't know. Uh, proof of the, that that uh, that our our, uh, our reasoning is sound on the uh, on the dredging. That our reasoning is sound. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. They want us. They want us to demonstrate to them that flooding, that the dredging will in fact help reduce flooding mm -hmm. uh, in the village. You only know, already said that. Right. I know they said that. Now the DOS is asking us to demonstrate that to them because we are not dredging in the locations where the Army Corps is dredging. We are dredging in locations outside of the Army Corps. So now they're making us do what the Army Corps did in their study. So, so, so we're going to go ahead and dredge a few areas just to show them that this is something that needs to be done. We, we, need, do to, we need to do something. We yeah, I think, I, think we, uh, I think we ought to uh, just just start and measure before, measure after, and say, look look at how the uh, river is flowing. So and... that's how I would approach it. Yeah, right? yeah. They're looking for us to create all sorts well, of not... studies and experts and this and that. If they haven't asked for it specifically, if they ask for proof, they do wanna, they do we want to climb in the river and start giving them proof. They specific... it, yeah, it, they but specific, want proof. they want proof, and proof would be to actually do it. And well, that would be great. But... Well, what then? What other proof what, is there? Could there be? They want a study. They want a hydrological yeah, study. Right. Well, you cut. <laughs> so, what other proof? But it might can we give them come back to bite us. What, why do they keep adding on? It's like every time we get near the goal line. It's like the Taylor Lane cap. They add on. I don't think they want us to have the point. Point blank. I don't think they want us to have the time. Why? I'm not sure. I can't answer that. I don't know why a community that has suffered like this, that have that has uh, obtained its considerable considerable consideration from elected officials all the way up to the top. I don't know why the state agencies are putting us through the ring like this. Has any know. other community um, uh, faced the same type of, I guess, hardship? Or difficulty? Well, they've been have they been contacted by other members of the community? I can't tell for certain, but I know my contractor, our contractor, who I spoke to, said that that's the information he had, and that was a while ago. That was a while ago. So what's going on now? I have no idea. Except we will have the best permit application ever created in the history of permit application. When is there a timeline? I can't give you a time. When can we get back in the river and start uh, start removing material again? Every day is 40 degrees and beautiful out. So, are, so are, are we in the river? We can be in the river. We just haven't because we don't have the material. We cleaned everything up. We cleaned everything up. Just the other day, we went in with the crane because we had some uh, buildup of some logs uh, mm -hmm. and things of that nature uh, over at Jefferson Avenue Bridge. Mm -hmm. We cleaned that up right away. Well, well you know, I, I don't, I don't think. You know, God knows when the, the Army Corps is going to get to um, a Columbus Park and, and, and the confluence. I don't think well, it's exactly right. I don't think we I don't think it's wise to wait for them to start. I mean, it, it'll be clogged up again by the time they get to it. You know what's going to happen? We, we put a shovel in the ground. There's going to be people calling the DEC. They're going to come down here and they're going to find us because that's what we have in this community. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. And in the past, in, in 2011, uh, I, I think. And then a complaint of this flooding. Right. I think mm -hmm. it happened. They got the dredging done. And, uh, you know, no one said anything. No one did anything. There was no opposition. There was no glad you're doing it. This time around, I, I've been through a lot of regulatory agency issues. Uh, I, I can't. What, are, the, what are they going to do? Make us put it back in the river? They would find us. This is all the stuff that we're submitting. That I, can't, oh, no, sir, I can't even tell you that it guarantees us that we get a permit after all of this is done. But I to to to, to answer no, Lou's sorry. question about dredging before we get a permit, there's a potential for fines, mm -hmm. and the fines could be significant. That's so that are. they're not going to make us put material back, but we would pay. Heavy we fine. could pay a heavy fine. And and we all know the people in this community that would call them in a hobby. And there is a cost of doing business to help and save the community as well. Okay. Could be. Report from Clerk Treasurer. Yes, Mayor. Uh, please advise we have received the resignation of a Board of Traffic Commissioner member, uh, Gary Kilman. 
Bigman. Bigman. Thank you. Sorry for mispronunciation. Sure. Spot for the record is a VOM death statement from New York State Office of the State Controller. Mm -hmm. uh, file for the record is also uh, the village received a Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from G4. Nice. And thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, results of December 13, 2022, uh, Memorandum Public Library Budget and Trustee Election. I just want to ask you something, okay? that, that uh, distinguished budget presentation, there, there were people uh, kind of maligning it online, saying that's something that you just uh, uh, kind of buy. Could you tell us the, what the process that was? The loan process, you have to file an application with GFOA, you have to present it in the format they request. There's a lot of work you have to do in providing supplement information, which my office put together, of course, with the help of the manager's office as well, and we're able to this presentation together and send it out. And then it goes between uh, several committees of GFO to review. Yeah. It's a six to seven month process. Okay, so it, it's not just that you fill out an application and write a check, which is what some people were falsely saying online. No, we put a lot of hours together. Thank you, and thank you for the hard work. Sure. Thanks, so, Bobby. GFO stands for Government Finance Officers Association. There's 19,000 state and local members. Yeah. Finance officers like all yeah that are member nineteen thousand, so it's not a uh, you know crackerjack type of organization. No, it's the real thing. And thank you, Wogi, for the hard work. Yeah, thank you. Report. Maybe you, maybe you should be working on those DEC permits. <laughs> Report from the village attorney. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs> uh, minutes, commissions, boards, and committees. Minutes of the Board of Trustees organ organization meeting, December 5th, work session, regular meeting of December 12th, and the AP <laughs> minor items meeting of December 27th, 2022. Uh, minutes of the Board of Architecture review meeting of December 6, 2022. Minutes of the Board of Ethics meetings of October 26, 2022. Minutes of the Planning Board meeting of October 26, 2022. And here we are in 2023. Uh, First meeting of the year. And this, this, this might be the longest meeting in the year. I uh, hope so. I'll make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I mean, yeah. All right. All, All in right. favor. Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mayor. Well, we, you know, we, we kind of we kind of fell in love in talking about the dog dog park. That's what happened. Well, that was a serious discussion. It was a good discussion. It was a good it was, I know. But <laughs> Woo -hoo! People look nice at really person in your office. Write that down. It's safe, though. Yeah, but well, you're getting the discount already. Is your agenda? The what? Oh, but what did you have? I don't see no, I was about to vote. Most of the people who were posted from.